Starkville, Mississippi, where the Bulldogs hope their bark will be as loud as humanly possible this afternoon. Pair first-year head coaches Mike Leach and Eli Drinkwitz trying to close down the regular season in strong fashion as these two programs meet for just the fourth time overall. Missouri and Mississippi State, the Tigers in Stark Vegas for the first time ever to close down the SEC's regular season. Well, great to have you with us. It's December 19th. We're still playing football. We're excited about that. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Don Davenport down on the field. And would you know it, six days away from Christmas, we still have some business to settle. I won't lie, it's a little strange to have conference football in late December, but I think both of these teams, quite frankly, will take advantage of this extra live rep. Yeah, they're going to get it this afternoon. Leading the charge for Mississippi State, it's a freshman quarterback, Will Rogers. Started the second half of the season. He's been impressive. Mike Leach's air raid offense has been different since this young man took over. A really good decision maker, makes quick decisions, an innate sense of timing and spacing, which is essential in the air raid offense. Missouri Tigers have a chance to win their sixth conference game of the season today. If they can do it, it'll be the first time since 2014 that that has occurred. They have bounced back in a major way. Winners of five of their last seven, picked near the bottom of the SEC East. They're going to finish in sole possession of third place and a couple of impressive wins along the way as well. Led by the redshirt freshman, Connor Bazelak. When Connor took over, he really had a calming influence on this offense. He's a smooth operator, a quick release, very accurate, and kind of a really good sense of taking care of the football, which is essential at that position. It's a different kind of cat. He's got a different demeanor about him. Ran the wishbone in high school, and Don Davenport has more on all of that. Well, a lot of that confidence comes in his preparation. Senior running back Larry Roundtree told me he reminds him of himself when he got to Mizzou. He came in as a sponge, ready to absorb and soak up wisdom and knowledge from absolutely everybody around him. He said Connor came in as an extra, extra large sponge, a quiet, head-down worker. He said you got to watch out for those quiet ones, though. Those are the ones that are discreetly hoarding information, spending hours in the dungeon watching film, just waiting to strike and beat you. That is Connor Bazelak. Guys, just a glimpse into why he's been able to have some success. Don Davenport dropping knowledge and some wisdom along the way. Just the fourth overall meeting between these two teams. The first time ever Missouri has battled Mississippi State in Starkville. And we're just about set and ready to go. Tigers won the coin toss. They will receive, and we'll see if Mike Leach and in the regular season in strong fashion. Bulldogs just two and seven coming in. They've been competitive and it's been a different team as of late on both sides of the football. Brandon Reese set to kick things off. Tyler Beatty back deep to receive. Rain perhaps expected in our second half, but right now temperatures in the lower 50s. And a touchback. Mizzou will get it at the 25. Connor Bazelak, 6-2 and two is the starter. Kelly, we mentioned it earlier, he ran the wishbone in high school out of Ohio. He's got a certain toughness about him that you certainly like. Yeah, you can see that toughness. There isn't any question, but I like the smoothness, and there's a kind of a calming influence. He has a quick release. And he really dissects things really well. Diagnosis, throws to the right place with Tom. And obviously that's going to be important in this Missouri offense going forward. Parker in motion on first down. Opening possession of the afternoon. Larry Roundtree, the senior, bottled up, driven backwards, and he'll go down. That's a loss of four on the play. Kobe Jones got there for the Dogs. And that's really one of the characteristics of Jack Arnett's defense on the, with Missouri State. There's a lot of moving parts on the line of scrimmage before the snap, and then they're slanting and they're stimming in that undersized defensive line of scrimmage to create penetration that we just saw in that play. Loss of eight officially on the play. The dump off is there. Parker driven backwards short of the 20. And Thompson. A head full of steam drove him down. The second defense for Mississippi State is really a, a child of Rocky Long is Zach Arnett's 
mentor. It's a 3-3-5 and a lot of movement up front. Unorthodox is the name that's used a lot of times for Mississippi State's defensive approach. So on third and 15, they'll stop play. The referee, David Smith. The previous play is under further review for targeting. Earl Thompson got there, number 40 in all black. Bulldogs wearing those all black uniforms for the first time this season. And the ball carrier, actually the receiver was Parker. And so I think this is going to be whether Thompson led with the crown of his helmet. And absolutely, I think Thompson might have done that. The crown of the helmet dips down, leading with the crown of the helmet, forcible contact. It doesn't matter where the strike is when it's the crown of the helmet. And that certainly looks like the boot was right to review it. And I think Thompson, strangely enough, may be out of this game. Senior out of Florence, Alabama will be disqualified after the booth review. Michael Wilkins is our replay official today. And that is a massive loss for Mississippi State, assuming that the call will stand, and I assume that it will. Yeah, and Thompson is that guy who had, went over 300 career tackles last week. And he has that experience in this conference, which is critical. But the dropping of the head, leading with the crown, is targeting 101. After further review, there was targeting by number 40. Number 40 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. That 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. And Roy, that, that portion of the targeting is really to protect the tackler. Because so many times the tackler, when you come down and you put your head down, leading with the crown, you expose yourself to injuries and Thompson is the one that did it on that play and obviously is very unhappy with being disqualified. So a massive turn of events as Nathaniel Watson replaces him on the field at that middle linebacker spot. Round tree to the edge. And a gain of three, maybe four, as we send you down to Don Davenport. Yeah, guys, Errol Thompson had to basically be carried by a coach into the locker room. You got to think, this guy's a senior. He's been the heart and soul of this defense. Uh, coach Arnett told me that he went to him immediately and said, hey, you know what this defense needs to hear at all times? This is your defense. Go. So that's a big loss for them, but also a tough way for Errol Thompson to end his career. Bulldogs hope to get a bowl invitation. Your guess is as good as mine as to whether or not that'll happen. A little trickeration. Parker has it in plus territory. And a quick toss. Nets a first down for Mizzou. So and, dub to Parker, Kelly. Yeah, and this is actually a staple of what Eli Drinkwitz wants to do at Missouri. It's a combination of Gus Malzahn and Brian Harson at Boise State. And you na named Boise State's offense the funk offense because that really isn't a trick play. That's a staple of this style of play. Beatty in motion, round tree up the gut and a big gainer on first down. Give him 12 yards and Mizzou in business. And round tree really is the, the table setter for what Eli Drinkwitz wants this offense to be. And round tree is a senior, you know, eligibility he can actually come back. He's probably going to be a pro this time next year, but he sets the table for a really physical downhill run game. Through the A-gap, crossing the 30. And a gain of four yards on first down for Mizzou. This drive began with a penalty, a targeting penalty, to put Thompson out of the game and Missouri taking advantage. Six in the box for the Bulldogs. They show pressure against the ground game as Roundtree is escorted out of bounds after a short gain of one. And once again, you see Mississippi State being successful on that late movement on the line of scrimmage. 
getting penetration and then bubbling that run play out to the sideline. That's quintessential Zach Arnett's approach defensively. Eighth play of the drive for Mizzou. Tigers coming off a tough loss against Georgia last week. It stopped a three-game winning streak. It's tied at 14, then the dogs pulled away. Hazelak with time, passes caught Damon Hazelton. Drive continues. That's a chain mover. And that was way too easy. Considering the down and distance, off coverage, man-to-man -man coverage on Hazelton. He just runs a kind of a lazy slant inside. And that's the diagnosis that you see out of Basilak. He sees it quickly, gets rid of the ball quickly, and typically takes impeccable care of the football as well. He's only thrown five touchdowns this season, but just three picks. Plenty of time here as he surveys. Now sails that pass out of bounds. That was going to be a shot play as Missouri gets down in just into the red zone. A lot of bells and whistles. And then it's a post pattern that was going to be right into the middle of the field. And then Roundtree was off in the flat was going to be the secondary receiver, but that was a shot play. It was intended to be a touchdown in the middle of the field to a post route by Doug. Beatty in motion on second down, round tree. Right tackle with a spin. Round tree keeps the legs turning, and that's a touchdown. How impressive is the senior from Raleigh, North Carolina, Larry Roundtree? Roundtree is a tackle breaker. You see the power play, two offensive line pulling from left to right, leading the big running back that breaks a ton of tackles. And the more Roundtree carries the football, Roy, the better he is. He's a workhorse running back. He needs about 20 touches a game to really feel it. And he's feeling it early in this one. How big was that targeting penalty? against Thompson, 75 yards in 10 plays, seven on the board for Mizzou on the opening possession of the game. The 39th career touchdown for Larry Roundtree. Five minutes in, back in Starkville, Mississippi. Kelly Stoffer, Don Davenport, Roy Philpott, Missouri. Off and running on the first possession of our football game. Larry Roundtree with the early honors. Rumbled in from 18 yards out moments ago. And the Bulldogs will get it at their 25-yard line. The vision, the power, Kelly, awfully impressive. Yeah, two pullers from the left side and Powell and Delgado, and the first guy kicks out, the second guy turns up, and the third guy is Roundtree carrying the football, and he's alone all by himself. He's a great finisher of runs. I love the way this young man plays, and you can see right there, rushing touchdowns in Mizzou history. He's climbing the board, and just an all-around pro at that position. First look at Will Rogers, fifth consecutive start. The true freshman out of Brandon, Mississippi. Marks motions out. The quick slant is broken up. It'll be second and ten. Contact and no whistle looking for Austin Williams and Rogers taking over for KJ Costello this season. And it's all about decision making and quick decision making, but also a feel of this Mike Leach air raid offense. It's a sense of timing as your receivers go hunt grass on the back end in coverage. And Will Rogers just seems to have a feel for that type of thing this, in this offense. Five-man pressure, Rogers sensing, he escapes. Will Rogers has a first down and a lot more. Sliding in safely at the 45, that'll move the sticks after a gain of 21. 
and against man-to-man -man coverage, all of that underneath coverage on the back end is running out with receivers, and there's a, always a gaggle of receivers. A lot of stunting out front, and then Rodgers gets past that first level, and nobody is there because they run off with five different receivers in the route, which is a staple of the air raid offense under Mike Leach. Jaden Wally motions to the other side. Now we'll change direction. Pocket collapses. Rogers off the back foot, and that one's going to be swatted away by Mizzou at the last moment. Well, in that first pass where Rogers took off, defensive coordinator for Missouri, Ryan Walters, was coming after the young quarterback. That time it was the opposite. Extreme. Rush three, drop eight, which has been really the thorn in the side of this offense. We were in here against Art when Mississippi State was playing Arkansas in early October, and that's the puzzle defensively that Mississippi State really hasn't consistently dealt with this year. It's Bolton on the PBU. The next play, another pass breakup. Joshua Bledsoe that time. And just like that, it's third down. And Roy, this air raid offense for Mike Leach in particular is a throw heavy offense. Throw first, run only when you absolutely have no other choice. And it's a volume of receivers. It's usually five receivers into the route and they're hunting up space. And then the quarterback has to be in sync with those receivers and anticipate where that space is. And it's been inconsistent to say the least this season. Mizzou bringing the house. Rogers floats one deep, far side, plus territory, incomplete. And how about Missouri's DBs? That was Bledsoe again. They are all over the football. And there's three freshmen starting back there today, Kelly. That's a good start. Yeah, Bledsoe is one of those experienced players. He's a safety that goes into the slot, and Wally runs an inside fade route. So you start at the slot, you move outside, and end up running essentially a wheel route from the slot position, if you will. But Bledsoe played the 50-50 ball better than Wally did. Tucker Day gets it away, the punter. Fair catch called for, and not made by Mizzou. Bulldogs fall on it in the end zone. And let's see if they're gonna rule that a touchdown. They do. Musser fumbled the attempted fair catch, and the muff punt is recovered by M Mississippi State. And Musser definitely muffed it from the beginning, and muff punts can't be returned, but this was kicked into the end zone and eventually recovered for a touchdown. What a big play on special teams for Mississippi State. Paul Blackwell jumped on it for the six points. And a lot happening here in the first part of our first quarter. The senior from Mississippi scores the touchdown. And how about Tucker Day, the junior punter out of Brentwood, Tennessee? A lot to feel good about. for an AT&T 5G studio update. I'm Peter Burns back here at our studios. And no Elijah Moore, no Kenny Yeboah, no problem. Braylon Sanders, 20 yards out from Matt Corral. 7-0 Ole Miss takes the early lead over LSU in Tiger Stadium. How about State's special team, Magic Boys? That's a long snapper's dream, Peter Burns. Paul Blackwell, the senior, the walk-on. He aspires to be a petroleum engineer when he's done playing football for Mississippi State. And you certainly feel bad for Cade Musser, but tell you what, you muff the punt, this is what happens. Yeah, and advantageous special teams. And it's a three-phase game that we play, right? It's defense, it's offense, and a lot of times we forget about this part of it. But when it comes up with a big play like we just saw, Good things for Mississippi State. Tied at seven, second possession for the Tigers right now. 
What's it like as a player when you have some kind of random special teams magic like that? It really feels like it would inject a lot of life in the sideline. It really does. And as a former quarterback, you, you feel like you got a freebie because you feel like all of the points, scoring the points is on kind of your shoulders in a sense. But when you see that, it's like a sigh of relief. And you got a gift, and certainly it's a welcome relief for this offense for Mississippi State that's been kind of inconsistent this season, to say the least. Snap over the head of Basilak. Roundtree corrals it back at the nine-yard line. That's a loss of 16 yards for Mizzou on first down, and disaster striking again. I didn't feel like that snap was all that bad. It seemed like Basilak took his eye off it to some extent and actually wasn't ready for it. Basilak is a 6'3 athlete and that was right by his right ear. And I think the issue, Roy, was the fact that Mietti snapped it before the quarterback was actually ready for it. 43 consecutive starts for Michael Mietti. Roundtree will get it on second and a mile and a big opening as a hard hit at the 22 will bring him down right there. And how about that? I think this is where you have to see Basilak's calm, cool, and collective demeanor. You have a bad play. You're second and 26. Hand the ball off and you get almost half of it back, but you're still third and behind the sticks. Early in the game, you want great decision making out of Basilak right here. After a gain of 14, the stop by Sean Preston. Here comes Mizzou on third and long. Four-man pressure. Clean pocket for Basilak. Slings one deep. Has a man open. That's Bannister, and he can't catch up to it. Had him by a step. Yet an over route underneath that was drawing the safety Preston number 12 up to it and then over the top Bannister had a step on his deep post route and the young quarterback Basilak just missed it. Those dual post routes in a sense are supposed to put pressure on the deep safety in this case it was Sean Preston number 12 and the deep post got behind him and the quarterback just couldn't put it on him. McGinnis gets it away under heavy pressure. And a dangerous grab just short of the 40-yard line for Mississippi State. That's a punt of 40. And nothing on the return. Well, coming up 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central. The SEC Nation crew will wrap up the four afternoon matchups and get you set for the Gators and the Crimson Tide. Plus, after the game, head back to the SEC Network for a full breakdown, interviews with players and coaches, and, of course, always available on the ESPN app if you're out and about. Nobody covers the SEC like we do. Uh, Will Rogers has yet to complete a pass, but his team is tied at seven with Missouri after the special team's magic moments ago. He had a big missed opportunity by Missouri's offense right there on the overthrow by Basilak. The late give. And Marks will be brought down, crossing the 40. Nice gain on first down, doing something Mississippi State does not do a lot of this year, and that's run the football. I knew you were going to go there. And five-man box be damned if you're Mike Leach. He wants to throw the football regardless. Five receivers a lot of times into the route. Four wides usually and a running back as a check down. The Bulldogs on track to have the lowest rushing total for a season since way back in 2008. A couple of penalty markers down. We'll check the infractions. So we'll give Gardner the catch, what would be third and short, pending the penalty. This actually might be a chop block. Two offensive linemen engaged with one defensive lineman, one high, one low. Number 57 on the offense. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 18 on the defense. Those fouls offset, replay, second down. Well, Cole Smith was the offensive lineman that got called for the hold, and he was engaged actually with a defensive lineman and a compadre, his next door neighbor, an offensive lineman, and I thought it easily could have been called a chop block, but instead it was a hold on Smith, but offset with the hands to the face by Gardner.
So after all that, second and five on the slant. Pass is caught. Osiris Mitchell in Missouri territory at the 45. That's a gain of 12. And Rodgers has a lot of confidence in Mitchell, and you can see why. Watch the way Mitchell snatches this ball. This is a contested catch. But the receiver needs to believe it's his football, and as a quarterback, you want to trust that your receiver is going to go snatch it, just like Mitchell did right there. 42nd reception of the season for the senior from Sarasota, Florida. And another run. Marks, another good game. Give him seven yards on first down. Inside the 40, he goes that time. Check that. That was... Dylan Johnson with a carry. And two high safeties usually means run the football. One high safety means we should have a matchup somewhere that we like, but not with Mike Leach. And I think this is an area of Mike Leach's offense that has to get better in this conference. You have to have a consistent run game presence. On second down, the crosser available. Wally has it near sideline, tapped out. Let's see where they stop him. And they're going to give him first down and goal all the way to the six-yard line after a gain of 32. Great job by Wally keeping his feet in bounds in the crossing route, anticipating man-to-man -man coverage. That is the strong suit of the air raid offense, is anticipatory play calling, crossing routes against man-to-man -man is stealing in some cases. They'll run it again, near side, Johnson. Hit the hole, Couple of tough hits, stop at the two. See, Philly, this is where I think Mike Leach's offense can get better. I think the air raid offense needs to be better closers in the red zone with the run game, especially tight in the run game. The field is condensed, five wide receivers really don't have the ability to, in the room to work. You need a run game physical mentality down here to close out drives sometimes. So Quavius Marks checks back in at running back on second and goal. And movement will cost him five. Yes, Spivey, number 11. False start. Number 11 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And Spivey is a former tight end, and I say former because with Mike Leach, there aren't any tight ends. But he's 6'5", 240 pounds, and so he's somewhat of a red zone target. You can create an edge with him blocking, but you can also create a mismatch with him and his big body down in the end zone somewhere. Six play of the drive on second and goal. Time for Rodgers, flushed again. Floats one end zone, wide open for the touchdown. Jaden Wally. And the Cowbells come alive in Starkville. This was intended to be a pick play. You can see the receivers coming from outside to in, and then Wally's going to benefit from that. And the key is the outside receiver has to sell it. You essentially have to manipulate your man-to-man -man coverage into the coverage of Wally, and that was an exceptional pick play right there. Eighth touchdown of the season for Will Rogers, second for Jaden Wally in Mississippi State has its first lead of the afternoon. Will Rogers is getting it done somewhat extra after the play. Spontaneity out of the quarterback in the red zone. A tremendous pick play, and Rogers loves every bit of it. Well, Mississippi State rosters turned over this season under a first-year head coach, and that means a lot of first-year guys are making impacts. And how about this? 100 and 38 receptions made by true freshmen. That's that's amazing. This season. Yeah, and to delve further into that, two of those are Marks and Johnson, the freshman running backs, to give you an idea of all of the check down throws to running backs in Mike Leach's air raid offense. Tigers will have it at their 25. Trailing for the first time, 333 to go 
in an active first quarter, shall we say. Yeah, fairly entertaining. I think the, the play has been pretty sound. I think a lot of really good decisions by quarterbacks and and Roundtree obviously is just continuing to pound people upside the head. <laughs> and he's rushed for over 3,600 yards in his career in Como. I think he's got a chance at the next level. You've been oh, talking about that all no week question. long. No question. Gets a six-man box. Beatty, a jump cut, spun down after a three-yard gain and, a, and face, a flag on the field. Yeah, face mask to boot. Someone reached that big left hand out and grabbed the running back squarely by the face mask. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 17. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That's Aaron Odom, the guilty party. And certainly happens. You you wonder why it doesn't happen more, because a lot of those defensive linemen are just trying to grab something. They see the running back flash. They reach out to grab whatever they can. And in this case, Odom got Beatty's face mask. Another early penalty to start a Mizzou drive. Bazelak wrapped up, driven back, and that'll count as a sack well behind the line of scrimmage. Tyrus Weeks made the initial contact, number two, that all-black uniform. And Eli Drinkwitz, the play caller and head coach, isn't going to like this because it's play-action pass with extra protection and only a three-man route. It, this is designed to be a shot play and go deep, and you protect with extra players, and it still was poorly protected in terms of pass blocking right there. Kelly, I think you and I wondered this week, would these two teams be excited to play in this game this late in the regular season in the weird year that is 2020 as Beatty comes ahead for a nice gain, almost back to the original line of scrimmage. And I think the answer to that question is yes. Both teams want to be here. That all-important additional rep this season could pay dividends going into 2021. And I, and I think in, in some way it's a testament to both of these coaches. Both of these coaches, remember, they're laying the foundation for the programs they want in their respective places. This is the first year for both Mike Leach and Eli Drinkwitz. So you're laying the foundation. And these teams definitely are excited to be playing this football game. Seen that on the field so far on third and 11. A long toss, and it's caught by Hazleton. And that's going to be enough for a first down in Bulldogs territory. Just watch the timing on this route. It's an out route to the wide side of the field, and how quickly Basilek has to get rid of that to have the right timing. Third and 11, that's a gain of 12. Round tree, the stutter step, powers ahead. We'll be stopped near the 42. You talked about Roundtree, whether he's a pro or not, and I definitely think he is because he's kind of an all-around guy. He takes care of the football when you let him carry it, so that's the big thing, especially at the next level. If you're going to carry the rock, you have to protect it, and he does that. He's a decent receiver, but he's a pounder with the football. With Smith in motion, Roundtree plunges ahead, crossing the 40. And it'll be stopped just short of the line to gain. That's a gain of six yards. And the other thing, Philly, is Roundtree, he's an efficient runner. He typically gets everything out of the run. And a lot of that he creates himself. Tigers needed about a yard, and Roundtree was bottled up. That's going to bring up fourth down. Watson got there, who stepped in for Thompson, who's already been disqualified today. And you definitely go for it here as far as I'm concerned. It's extra time COVID-2020. I think Drinkwitz keeps his offense on the field, and you might see some type of option with Basilek and the running back right here. Remember that Connor Basilek was a wishbone quarterback in high school. It's hit in the box for a moment, and that'll create a timeout for Mizzou. Somewhat of a Polaroid play. You try to get an idea of what the defense is doing, and then you go ahead and take a timeout. End of the first quarter is here. 14 to 7, our score. The home standing Bulldogs out in front of Mizzou.
studio update. There's a reason why Ole Miss wears powder blue, so you don't do this. Throw it to the guy in the other jersey, Jay Ward, with the pick six. LSU up 10-7. Love the powder blue unis, PB, back here in Starkville. Fourth down and two for Missouri. Off play action, round three. Wide open, it's going to be batted down. And a turnover on downs. Tyrus Wheat had a sack in the first quarter. And a PBU there, that one was big. Yeah, extremely well defended by Mississippi State. And really anticipated to some extent what's coming. And the premise is to fake it to Roundtree. And a lot of times, oddly enough, the defense will forget about the running back that the fake went to. And that running back will leak out into the flat and he'll be wide open for the conversion. But it was the pressure in the face of the quarterback. But Roundtree was covered really well anyway. Rodgers back on the field started this game 0 for 4. All four passes were broken up. Since then, three for three, 51 yards and a score. And you can feel and sense his confidence growing by the snap in this air raid. Jaden Wally, first down into Mizzou territory. It's a gain of 14. Wally creating space immediately. And a quick decision by Will Rogers. A simple slant route inside, out leverage the coverage, and get into that green grass in the middle of the field. Mike Leach told us this week, yeah, we've taken our licks. So many freshmen playing so many key snaps this season. There have been opt-outs, missed games, dump off. There's Marks. Nice move, a spin and a first down for Mississippi State. Stopped inside the 40. Marks had 47, excuse me, 53 catches coming into this game. And, and really, the running back is just simply the fifth receiver a lot of times in the Mike Leach's version, really the per, pure version of this air raid offense. After a gain of 11, they'll fake it to Marks, set up the screen. Spivey. Stopped at the 26. That's another first down and a pickup of 12. The tunnel screen coming back inside by Spivey, but there you see the freshman receivers, Marks and Wally and Griffith, and a gaggle of them. And you would think those guys are going to be staples in this air raid for the next couple of seasons. Bulldogs unable to go through spring practice with the Pirate on the sideline for the first time. Play action for Rodgers on first down. The crosser nearly picked off. Trying to spot Cumbus across the middle. And Martez Manuel broke it up. And Manuel doing a really good job of coming underneath that route. Get in the hip pocket of the crossing receiver and you see right there that was well done by Manuel. It was man-to-man -man coverage. Missouri was getting after Rodgers but well defended in that coverage on the back end. And Tigers without the services of Tyree Gillespie today. Delayed handoff and Marks makes something out of nothing on second down. It'll be third and short for the Bulldogs. I think going forward, you're going to see more of that in 2021 is somewhat down and distant management by Mike Leach. Run the football and get in the third and more manageable when you need to. Dylan Johnson checks in the Bulldogs backfield. Pockets there for Rodgers across the middle, swatted away. Jelani Williams. Rodgers didn't see Williams. Williams was that extra safety in the middle of the field. And really is just reading the quarterback, number four, right in the middle, breaking on the crossing route. And so as that player, Williams, number four, that free coverage guy in the middle of the field, you're allowing the quarterback to take you to the football. 
And that's exactly what Williams did as he broke on that crossing round. Fortunate it wasn't picked off. 40-yard attempt for Brandon Rees. And from the right, hash on the way. He'll sneak that one through. MSU extending its lead. Our new score, 17 to 7. 12-14 remaining in our first half. This year, welcome back to Starkville, Mississippi, where Mississippi State is off to an impressive start, and it really is on the shoulders of a really unorthodox defense that is pressuring Missouri's offense. Look at all of the penetration. Defensive linemen getting off blocks, and then you see that fourth down play that was extremely well defended by Wheat and company, and that's really been a staple. Zach Arnett's unorthodox 3-3-5 that he got from his mentor, Rocky Long, is really played well all year. They played the run extremely well, fourth in this conference, but played well against the pass at times also. All right. Put yourself in the shoes of Eli Drinkwitz on the road, trailing by 10 all of a sudden. Offensively, what are you trying to dial up here? I think you have to give the quarterback, Basilak, a little more room. Throwing on first down as an example, and just drop back sometimes, not even play action pass. You want to have a, a downhill, really physical run game if you're Eli Drinkwitz. That was kind of the first words out of his mouth to us during the week. And you know you have that, but right now that's not working. Allow your young quarterback to get to work a little bit. Play action on first down. Basilak off the back foot, floats it out of bounds. Kiki Chisholm, the intended target, blanket coverage by Martin Emerson. Yeah, Philly, having said that, allow your quarterback to operate. I, I don't know that Missouri's real dynamic in the wide receiver position currently, and I think that's been their issue. Physical run game, yes, an offensive line that's been good at times, both in run, the run game and pass protection, but just not consistent at the wide receiver position. Brown tree to the edge, that's a first down. He just bursts out of there for a gain of 16 on second and long. And this is a great security blanket for Eli Drinkwitz. When you can throw on first down and have an incompletion, then run on second down and pick up the first down. Back to the well once again, round tree probing. And lasso down crossing the 45. Eli Drinkwitz told us that with this unorthodox approach that Mississippi State takes defensively, in the run game, you kind of have to ride them to the sideline. There's a lot of moving parts. Just get a hat on somebody and continue to ride them wide and then let Roundtree and Beatty kind of pick their spots. And that's what you're seeing so far on this drive. The stop by Watson. That was a gain of five, second down. Roundtree this time. Stop short of the line to gain. It'll bring up third and three. And I like right now the outside run for Missouri more than I like the inside run. Because that movement up front by Mississippi State defensively is creating penetration in the box, but you can thin it out when you go to the edges in the run game. Tigers two out of four on third down so far. A big play coming up when we come back. Timeout, Mizzou. All right, third and three coming up for Mizzou. Back in Starkville, Mississippi, Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Don Davenport. And a reminder, tomorrow, 6 Eastern, 5 Central, the time is now for SEC Down College Football Bowl Special. Plus a preview of the college football playoff semifinals, team breakdowns, comprehensive analysis like only the SEC Now team can do. Just like everything else, also available on the ESPN app. Selection day tomorrow, and as many as maybe two teams from the SEC to reach the college football playoff. We will see if that's the case, but if you're late to the party, Texas A&M took care of business at Tennessee earlier today, so the Aggies squarely in the conversation. And of course, Florida and Bama right there as well. I think the tide are in no matter what happens tonight in the ATL, the championship game. 
Bulldogs showing pressure. Here they come. Basilak across the middle. That was too easy, the pitch and catch. Bannister has a first down. Stopped at the 42 by Colin Duncan. A good use of the bunch set to the right that time. And on the snap, that bunch kind of explodes, and you end up with a essentially a flood route to the right side. And Bannister came over the football and shows his double one to the quarterback, and you convert and move the chains. After a gain of 10, they'll fake the reverse. Basilak going deep, has a man brought down. There's contact, and there's a flag. Deontay Smith, the intended target. This is going to be a first down for Mizzou. Martin Emerson going to be flagged for P.I. here. And I think Emerson panicked a little bit. I think you just go up and break up the pocket. Pass interference on the defense. Number one, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Emerson did not have bad position here. Don't panic. Just go play the football. Break up the pocket. I think there was still an opportunity to do that. Instead, Emerson drags the, the receiver down. From the 27, round tree to the edge. And leaps across the line of scrimmage. Gain of five on first down. As Emerson brought him down to the turf. You, you get a little sense of who Eli Drinkwitz is as a play caller. He, he likes to take the shots once in a while. And there's kind of a number of shots per quarter that he likes to take. But then he goes back to the security blanket, which is a physical downhill run game to kind of set the table, get into third and ahead of the chains once again that you see right here at second and five. Lead blocked by Parker, round tree to the edge, tripped up after another first down. We do like the offensive philosophy in Como with Drinkwitz and his background going back to his days at Boise State with Brian Harson, Gus Malzahn at Arkansas State. It's an interesting combination of tactical ideas on the offensive side of the football. Roundtree bottled up, driven down. He'll lose a couple. Watson brought him down. And a negative play by Mississippi State, which is kind of conversely their calling card. They have a lot of moving parts, unorthodox play, Zach Arnett, but it's all designed to create negative plays and get the offense behind the chains. When the offense is behind the chains, the defense typically can dictate the terms. Don't you have to be unorthodox to be a defensive coordinator for Mike Leach? <laughs> I mean, right? You got to be. You go ahead and answer that question yourself. Basilak on the RPO sails the pass out of bounds. Well, Beatty was hovering around the 20. And that's a backwards pass, so the ball's going to be spotted where it left the playing field. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's the kind of the modern day triple option. You had a zone run inside and then you have the quarterback getting to the edge where he can run it or he can throw it to the other receiver or the other option as opposed to pitching it. That was bad, a bad mesh between Beatty and the quarterback. That didn't look good from the get go. Five yard penalty. We play third down. Third and 22. Yeah, the substitution infraction that follows the backwards pass. And now Zach Arnett is getting all excited because this is certainly where a defensive coordinator wants to live. Third and forever, just keep the ball in front of the sticks and make a tackle in space. Eli Trinkwitz calls the plays. Did so at Boise State and NC State. We're becoming the head coach and play caller at App State across the middle. Beatty, well short of the line to gain, but it'll set up chip shot field goal attempt as Watson brings him down just short of the 15. And that's well done by both teams, actually. Defense, tackle in space, force a field goal, and then Basilak and Eli Drinkwitz, it's about field goal management. You move from an iffy distance to what you said, Philly is a chip shot at this point in time. 
No, everything's been a chip shot for Harrison Mevis this season. Yeah, he's got a tank for a leg, no doubt. 16 of 19, including the game winner against Arkansas off the high snap. And Mevis calmly bangs it through. The field goal from 33 yards out is true, and our new score 17 to 10 here in Starkville. Peter Burns with another studio update. Not going to lie, I cannot wait for SEC baseball season. Be down at Doty, Duty Noble Field, all of that. Well, how about a baseball player making football moves? Jerry on Ely for the Rebels. Zip, zip. All the way, 100-yard touchdown returns, 17-14. Still LSU over the Rebels. Sounds like a fun one, PB, back in Starkville. Kelly Stauffer, Don Davenport, and Roy Philpott on hand. Good game here as well, less than seven to go in our first half. And a one-possession contest. Bulldogs will get it back. And Will Rogers trotting back on the field as we speak. Well, all six of his incompletions have been courtesy of Missouri's defense with a PBU, so he's been on target. Yeah, and that's really his strong suit. I think he's a quick decision maker, but he's an accurate passer. And I love the fact that he has kind of a little bit of charisma to him. There's some spontaneity. He's a decent athlete, but it's ball placement, quick decisions, and kind of an innate sense of spacing that is critical in the air raid offense. That's a good sign for the Bulldogs next year because Mike Leach just signed Sawyer Robertson, one of the top quarterbacks in the country. Texas native. He's inside the top 15 in a lot of statistical categories. The high school ranks all time passing yards, touchdowns. His last game, in fact, Kelly threw for nine scores just nine. a week ago. Sawyer Robertson, remember nine that scores. name. Nine touchdowns in a game. And he runs an air raid-ish type offense. That's correct. As well, so he will know the lingo when he gets here to Starkville. And four-star player inked with MSU this week, early signing period. Rogers stops. It'll bring up third down. So Nick Bolton got there. First time we've called his name wow. today for the future. Pro linebacker. Yeah, no doubt about that. He's going to be in the NFL making a boatload of tackles and be a special player for someone at that level. And his role today is really to to zone up in coverage a lot of times and spy the check down, which is a centerpiece of what Mike Leach likes to do in this air raid system. On third down. Rodgers flakes it. Williams has it right at the line to gain, and that should be enough to move the chains, and it is. That was well done, and that's where you see the, the ball placement and the timing. That ball has to come out the quick out by Williams. It's just a down and distance play. It has to be accurate on time, and then you can convert and simply move the sticks. No, Missouri normally going to play majority of its back end man to man coverage. We asked Ryan Walters, would you do that this week against the air raid? He said, yeah, you know, that's what we do. And so far, Mississippi State's had the advantage. Jaden Wally weaving around deep down the field plus territory. Stopped inside the 30. And the Bulldogs in business again after a gain of 37. This isn't the first time we've seen this matchup between Wally and Bledsoe. That experienced safety comes down to the slot and covers, and Wally actually had a huge play here. This is woefully underthrown. Wally had a couple of steps on Bledsoe initially, and then Wally had to come back and make a play on that football and did it quite well. I think Mike Leach loves that guy right there. And he's going to love him a lot more in the coming seasons. He's just a freshman. Here comes pressure. Bulldogs pick it up. Mitchell has it on the slant. That's another first down inside the 15. And a gain of 15 yards for the air raid. And it was a zero blitz. A boatload of people coming. And it was the diagnosis by Rodgers to get to Mitchell. There were multiple options on the slant route, but Mitchell was the right decision. Kelly, we were here for the loss to Arkansas a week after Mississippi State upset LSU way back in week one. And that seems like 10 years ago. 
This is a different feel with Rodgers controlling the air raid than what we saw with KJ Costello. Griffin makes his first catch. Stop at the six. It'll bring up second and short after a gain of eight yards. And the tunnel screen once again, Mississippi State has one of the longest tunnel screens in college football. That receiver comes way back inside, and then you catch the wave of those offensive linemen going out from the line of scrimmage outward and starting to pick up, pick off defenders. And this play wasn't looking very well early in the year. It's starting to look in sync now. Williams motions to the slot. Johnson in the backfield. Fade route. Mitchell back corner. Did he corral it? He did for the touchdown. How about the touch on that pass from Will Rogers from seven yards out? Matched up on yet another freshman corner. This one was number two, Enos Rakestraw. But Mitchell is the closer in the red zone that Rogers has confidence in. I didn't know if Mitchell caught that cleanly and had possession before he went out of bounds, but that's who Rodgers looks for when he needs a big play. He has confidence in the big receiver at 6'5", 210, and Mitchell typically delivers for his freshman quarterback. Rodgers perfect on that drive, 5 for 5, 69 yards. You know, you play that game in practice where you try to throw the fade onto the pylon. I think that thing would have stuck on top of the pylon if Mitchell <laughs> didn't catch it. The art of throwing the fade. First of all, find who you want to throw it to and then drop it in the pocket. Rodgers to Mitchell. That's beautiful. If weekend gives us championship type plays, how about Trevor Lawrence? His Tigers down 3 nothing. Well, then Mario Rogers catches it 66 yards, 7-3 at half. Coming up on the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report, Chiz, what are you seeing out of state right now? On offense, it's in sync. Will Rogers looks really good. Dynamite dropping, Crystal, and more <laughs> from him at half. Peter Burns, thank you very much. Chilly afternoon in Starkville, Mississippi. Kelly Stoffer, Roy Philpont, Don Davenport on the sidelines today. Good start for the home team. Bulldogs their largest lead. A critical possession now for Mizzou as MSU will be set to receive the opening kickoff of our second half. Connor Bazelak, no reason to press. Feel the pressure here, here. A lot of time still left to work with here at the end of the half. Yeah, and this is great work for Bazelak. You have two timeouts, you have plenty of time. This is quintessential two-minute offense and a great opportunity to get a live rep with a young quarterback and his play caller, Eli Drinkwitz, loves this opportunity for his squad. Bazelak, 6 of 10, 51 yards. Round tree approaching the century mark in our first half, and he's wrestled down. After a gain of two, so Roundtree now at 90 yards already. Missouri has found some softness out on the edge in that run game, but they haven't had the pass game to go with it. And Drinkwood's told us that. They're lacking the eraser outside, a perimeter receiver that can turn a little one into a big one in a hurry. They just don't have that right now. Last tackle by Wheat. Long pass to Chisholm. That'll move the chains as he dives ahead for a gain of 11. Chisholm's a transfer and Hazelton is also a grad transfer. Bannister has been productive, but they need some dudes out wide in this offense. Chisholm again. Soft underbelly of that Mississippi State defense. That'll move the chains again. Give them 11 more to stop by Watson. In this two minute offense, as we have a Mississippi State player that went down, you have two timeouts, so you really just let the clock run, move with a purpose, but don't use that timeout typically until you get somewhere right around the minute mark. Coming up on Tuesday, our next SEC Inside will give you an all-access pass to the SEC championship game between Florida and the Crimson Tide. You get never-before-seen footage and sounds from players and coaches. 6 Eastern on Tuesday. 5 Central right here on the SEC Network. 
and the ESPN app. Emmanuel Forbes being helped up. Busy day in the conference. Who you got tonight? Bama, Florida. Can the Gators give, give them a run for it? No, no. I think it's Bama big tonight. A lot of chirping out of Gainesville. Curious to see how both teams respond. Hazleton. Ball was thrown before he made his cut. Working against Burge. Pass sails incomplete. And Mississippi State has been getting fairly consistent pressure out of that unorthodox attack by Zach Arnett. And you saw it on that play. That ball came out early because it had to come out early with that pressure in the face of Basilak. One forty-six remaining. Tigers trying to put one more scoring drive together. Hazelton corrals it right before he tumbled out of bounds in the plus territory. Verge in coverage. Tigers do have two timeouts to work with, and they're on the move. That was good timing once again. Hazelton runs a really nice out route, and you can tell that Basilak is comfortable with that. That ball was out on time and very well placed. Talking to Eli Drinkwitz this week, Basilak's not a guy that's going to wow you on social media. He's not going to be a loud presence necessarily in the locker room. Chisholm barrels ahead, close to another first down. And a flag on the field, two penalties. Back near the 50. Holding, number 51 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. That's a big one. There aren't many fans here in the stadium, but all of them were moaning because they wanted to see the holding penalty called. And absolutely, when you get multiple flags on the same holding call, it's a brutal one, and you saw it on that play. Powell definitely horse collared the defensive end getting after the quarterback. Zeke Powell started his career at South Alabama. Coffeyville Community College, the JUCO route. The Jayhawk League in Kansas, that's a tough JUCO conference. First and 20 for Basilak off the back foot. And the rifle strike to Chisholm. Back in Mississippi State territory, that's a nice gain on first and long. Give him 12 yards. You see that smoothness that I'm talking about? He's just kind of smooth. He's casual about the throw. He has a quick release. I don't think he has a tremendously strong arm, but he gets rid of it very quickly, and it's usually an accurate pass also. For his ACL last year, final game of the season against Arkansas. Rehabbed in the offseason. Started this campaign on the bench before taking over. Six and two as a starter. Let's see what he's got in his bag of tricks now on third and seven. And I think still rehabbing from that ACL and having kind of a dysfunctional training camp probably prevented Basilak from starting this entire season. He had Sean Robinson begin the first two games, and then in that second game, Basilak took over. We'll see if he can do something here. Three of six on third down. Pressure! Basilak was hit. That pass is going to be intercepted. Picked off by the Bulldogs. And Mississippi State will get it back. Emmanuel Forbes back on the field, healthy. And he comes up with the interception. Third of his young career. And Roy, this is a great look at how an interception is tied to the pressure. The pressure leaves leaves that throw inside and Forbes has an opportunity to pick it off. That pressure leads to the errant throw. The throw is slightly late and the ball placement is inside and Forbes has an opportunity to come underneath that out route. Boy, Forbes had the interception return for a touchdown against A&M earlier this year. Big one against LSU in that season opening upset of the Tigers, the defending champs way back in week one. Another big one here. Bulldogs with time to work with. Wally was hit hard and brought down by Jelani Williams. And this out route should be obviously on the outside, and that throw was affected by that pressure, and the ball ended up inside allowing Forbes to come underneath it and that ball was actually come out fluttering a little bit because of that pressure. I didn't know that it affected the ball quite that much but it absolutely did.
I thought Emerson was going to get a clean shot at him instead. Just kind of hit him with the hands, but that was enough. Pass caught. Austin Williams plus territory. So a gain of almost 20 in Mississippi State suddenly in business. Time winding down in our first half. Bulldogs with three timeouts to work with here. Across the middle. Pass is caught. Another first down. Malik Heath reels it in. And a good time to use a timeout here if Mike Leach wants to, and I believe he will. And I thought Mike Leach might use his first of three timeouts the previous play because precious time ticked off the clock. And now you have 22 seconds left, two timeouts, certainly plenty of time after two really nice routes and two really nice throws by Rodgers. So Williams goes for 19 before Heath gains 24 in the air raid has been electric so far and it's all about multiple receivers hunting up grass in coverage and a quarterback that is in sync with those receivers and that's essentially what the air raid is Roy it's most of the time five receivers that are trying to find space and a quarterback that has to be on the same page with those receivers and anticipate where that space is going to be. And will Rodgers move this air raid offense at Mississippi State to a new level when he begin to play more consistently? Seven different players have caught passes today from Will Rogers, freshman out of Brandon, Mississippi. MSU on the move, 22 seconds to go. Well, they covered Marks out of the backfield, and Rodgers just flings that one incomplete. Heavy pressure coming. And Rodgers almost got caught holding that ball too long. The last thing you can do in the red zone is to take a sack when you only have 22 seconds left to start that play, even though Mississippi State has a couple of timeouts they could have used it. But that situational football 101 for a young quarterback. Do not take a sack in the red zone. 99 Isaiah McGuire with the pressure. On second down towards the front pylon and incomplete. Heath in the area and coverage was coming quickly with Bledsoe on the move. And that's the point. Bledsoe is that wily experienced safety forced that fade route further outside because as a quarterback you kind of see that safety cheating out of the corner of your eye you know where you want to go on the fade but you tend to leave it further and sit more safely outside when that safety is coming quickly off the hash third down 12 seconds remaining bulldogs with two timeouts left Rodgers surveying across the middle. Wide open. Spivey dropped it. Well, he heard footsteps coming. Jaquarius Spivey took his eye off it for a moment, and the pass falls incomplete. Spivey did a great job of, again, getting into that green grass, that space. It's man-to-man -man underneath, and then Spivey just simply has to catch the football. It was well ran. It was... Well done by the quarterback getting through his progression, but Spivey just couldn't complete the play. Brandon Rees perfect so far today. Three PATs and a field goal from 33 yards out. This one will be a 43-yard effort. And Eli Drinkwitz going to utilize a timeout. You can get a sense of what Mike Leach sees in Will Rogers on this drive. There's, there's just some savviness to him. You know, even though he's a true freshman, he just gets it. You know, there's a sense of timing and a sense of, and in really anticipation of spacing that's required out of the quarterback in this offense that leads to a quick decision. Anytime in the air raid offense, you see the quarterback holding the football, something's wrong and it typically leads to bad things in KJ Costello's case it led to interceptions KJ when we were in here against Arkansas Costello would get a little impatient and throw the football where he shouldn't and Will Rogers just rarely does that 
Reese, 8 of 10 this season. 43-yard effort from the right hash. On the way, and he'll split the pipes. How about Mississippi State? 30 minutes in the books and a three-score lead at halftime, 27 to 10. Will Rogers, 13 of 23, almost 200 yards and two touchdowns. Entertaining first half in the books as we send you down to the SEC Network studios. Here's Peter Burns. Thank you, gents. Welcome to the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, and Peter Burns. I'm sure Brandon Walker and a bunch of state fans happy with how that ended up for uh, the Bulldogs and Mike Leach. We'll hear from him with Don Davenport as the Bulldogs are up 27 to 10. CD, what was the story there? In the well, I'll tell you what, Mississippi State's offense is painful to watch at times, but when it's clicking, it's a lot of fun. And we saw an offense that was in rhythm. We saw Will Rogers be on the same page with, with his wide receivers, spread the ball around to seven different guys, and the, the offense offense has moved the ball really well today. I think they're starting to find something, especially with that core of young players that's building for the future. Yeah, I think this offense is built on repetitions, right? And they look comfortable. Finally, we're yeah. in the last game of the year. But Will Rogers is very impressive. Think about that last drive. Seven mm. plays, 43 yards. There's only like 46 seconds left on the clock. That's when you know you've got a command presence of the offense. But guys are stepping up to the plate and making plays. A lot of them are freshmen. How many times in, a week, in the last few weeks have we talked about Jaden Wally yeah, yep. coming on the uh, scene? So everybody's making plays, and the offense is insane. Cyrus Mitchell, that absolutely perfect pass from Will Rogers, I think, which is absolutely Dropped it in, on a T. Here's Mike Leach with Don Davenport after the break. Will Rogers started 0 for 4, finished with almost 200 yards. What was the difference for him? Well, we quit dropping the ball, and then I thought he played a little better, too. Defensively, you were able to get pressure on their quarterback. What work that has to continue? We just have to keep winning individual battles. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Very Greg Popovich. Uh, He's excited. His answers. That. Yes, very excited. I'm excited about this matchup, uh, 109th meeting between the LSU and Ole Miss, and Rebels up 7-3 early. Matt Corral. Oh, no. Jay Ward, the sophomore, taking it to the house, coach. Yeah, you know, this is a much maligned defense. For the last couple of weeks, they've stepped up to the plate. Max Johnson stepped up to the plate last week against the Florida Gators in the Swamp. Calls his own number there. Quarterback sneak. LSU up 17-7. Love to see it when baseball players make football plays. Jerry on Ely to the yeah, house. A little indecisive at first. Probably ill-advised. Eight yards deep. No, he was faking him out. That was the old the okie doke Use the speed. Hit the gap. Off to the races there. This has been a game of big plays, back and forth momentum swing. It's a fun game. A lot of talent on both sides of the ball, including Kayshawn Butte, who was fantastic in the swamp last week. And Max Johnson finds it in the seam and off to the races he goes. Yeah, this is one of the most talented freshmen coming out of high school last year. And now you're starting to see, again, reps pay off. This guy's shown up the last two weeks big. 24-21, three minutes left to go in the second quarter. Texas A&M, number five in the college football playoff rankings. They need to impress the committee, and let's see if they do it. Kellen Mond hits Anaya Smith for a touchdown. Aggies up 24-13. That's where right before half, and well, you just love some Jalen Wildemeyer, too. Yeah, he's used... All of his weapons, including Jalen Widermeyer, extremely well over the last couple weeks. This is an offense that I think starting to hit on all cylinders, putting their best foot forward, as you said, for the committee. 24-13s, get a couple style points in there. Nice Smith punches it in. A&M defeats Tennessee 34-13. Seven straight SEC victories for Texas A&M. And Jimbo Fisher turns from head coach into politician afterwards. All, all season, the off season, the things we did when everybody else was going crazy. I mean, all the skeptics, our guys stayed together, played hard, and our tough, our toughness, our toughness <laughs> and competitiveness. Why do you think Texas A&M is deserving of a top four playoff finish? Let me tell you why. We play in the best league in ball. We got beat by the number one team in the country, who also had another superstar on the team when they played us, named Waddle. People ain't even playing with him now. No team in SEC history has never lost not one game and been in it. The other leagues, I love them all. If we can't play in this league and be in the playoff, something's wrong. Woo-wee, Jimbo Fisher fired up seven straight SEC wins. Ohio State won't even play seven games the entire season. Did they do enough, Chiz, 
to impress themselves or impress the college football. Well, they you know. did what they needed to do today. I mean, they won convincingly. They're a solid football team on all sides of the football and special teams. I don't under, I, I don't blame him a bit for politicking because when you go 9-1 and one in this league, mm -hmm. that's huge. Hey, the one dominant thing that stood out to me, 44 minutes of possession. They were able to run the football all day long against that Tennessee defense and 10 of 14 on third downs to move the chains. Uh, incredible. Tennessee only had 37 plays. The Aggies in their regular season at 8-1 and one, and now, fingers crossed, that they end up uh, getting an opportunity to play in the college football playoff. How about this? Like a beautiful lob wedge over at Mossy Oak. Osiris Mitchell from Will Rogers and States up 17 at the break. This halftime report is presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Simple human sense. Welcome back to the Auto Owners Insurance halftime report. Don't muff a punt. Just not supposed to do that. Worked out pretty well for Mississippi State. One of the reasons why they are up 27-10 at the break. Let's go outside the footprint, get you caught up in everything that's going on on championship game weekend. ACC, just right down the road from our studios here in Charlotte, Clemson, Notre Dame. Oh, no. He's got beautiful hair, and that was just a first, first interception against the 353 Blitz opportunities. Is that a true story? Or you just yeah. make that up. I just sounded confident enough when I said it, right? <laughs> um, next drive for Clemson didn't matter. Mari Rogers gets it. Clemson up seven to three, and then they start turning it on. Chiz. Well, I mean, they're explosive, and look at this guy. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is what he is, guys. He's one of the best players, if not the best player in college football, and he's showing it right now against one of the best defenses in college football. 14 to three, and the Clemson Tigers are in the red zone again. All right, another team that's in action, number four, Ohio State, looking to secure their spot in the college football playoff as they're taking on 14th ranked Northwestern. How about this pick from Brandon Joseph? Exactly how you draw that up, guys. Look at that press coverage down there. We're going up and high pointing the ball, but with one hand. Justin Fields rolls out and gives it back. I'm not sure why that they ever success. threw a pass, Chiz. I mean, uh, it was just ridiculous how well they were able to run the football against that Northwestern defense in the second half. They win 22 to 10, and maybe six wins might get them enough um, to be in the college football playoff. Hey, by the way, the big boys are playing tonight. SEC championship game, and we got you covered. SEC Nation coming on at 6.30, and then football final. We'll break it down at 11.15. Rough estimate live from the SEC championship right here on the SEC ESPN network. All right, so what four is going to be in? Talking about those games, Florida, Alabama, our SEC Nation crew will give us some insight. But how about Larry Roundtree? Forced to be reckoned with, one of the few bright spots for the Tigers in the first half. They find themselves down 17 at the break. This halftime report is presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Simple human sense. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, Peter Burns with you. These guys will be breaking down the game, but we're also talking a whole heck of a lot about the primetime game coming up tonight. That is Florida in Alabama SEC Championship on the line. Laura Rutledge heads our coverage in the ATL. Getting closer and closer to the SEC championship game here in Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, the site of this game. And every year, it's all about this. If you're in the SEC, can you get to Atlanta with a chance <laughs> to play for the championship? As we welcome you here, the SEC Nation crew here with you all day long, leading you into this game. And so much more. Tim Tebow, Roman Harper, Jordan Rogers. I'm Laura Rutledge. Let's talk about the college football playoff implications because, Tim, this game is full of them. Let's start with Alabama. If they win, they're obviously in. If Alabama loses, you think they're still in the playoff? I think most likely they would be in. I think there's a lot that we need to watch and evaluate the entire yeah. day, right, before we make our minds up. So we need to keep our eyes open and watch every single play. Please, committee, watch every single play. <laughs> <laughs> but I still think even if Alabama loses, most of the scenarios still have them in. What do you think, Roman? I think they will be in regardless. Uh, if they do lose, it's still one of the best losses because it's a top 10 or 7 loss yeah. on your resume, which is better than some other teams' losses. And the way that they have played all year long, nobody can deny that they have been far and away the most complete and best team in college football this year. Does that guarantee that Florida's in? 
<sighs> That's the big question. Well, here's the other thing, too, guys. I would say, Jordan, that the committee showed Florida a lot of respect by only dropping they did. one spot. It, what's the scenario with Florida? I'll start with you here. If they win this game, are they in? I think they need help, honestly. Yes, I do too. Because of the loss, like then they're gonna, you're going to evaluate Florida against the loser of Notre Dame and Clemson. Let's say Notre Dame loses that game. Notre Dame just lost to a team that they also beat. Yeah. So how do you put Florida ahead of Notre Dame, even with Florida beating Alabama? Then maybe you look at an Ohio State. If they look terrible, but can you really put but them ahead? But what I, I would don't say, know. Well, what I would say in the Florida versus Notre Dame is Notre Dame was won in overtime at home against their big win was at home against a backup true freshman quarterback, given five-star talented, but still a true freshman starting, I think it was his second game, versus Florida beating the number one team in the country. So when I evaluate Notre Dame losing that versus a two-loss Florida team that went on the road to lose barely to A&M and, and then lost a bad one at home but had the best win. That's where the argument a little bit, I think, can be weighed out. That's a better argument for Florida than I think the rest of them. That's a scenario I think Florida would like. Tim, it's so important though, the point that you made off the top. Keep your eyes open today. Right. It's Championship Saturday. Wild things have happened before on Championship Saturdays. We'll see what happens this evening right here behind us and we are with you all day long from Atlanta the SEC Nation crew getting you ready for the championship game a little later on as well and then we'll recap the entire night from Atlanta we'll see you soon great insight there but CD I'll ask you former Florida Gator why in the world should I think that Florida actually has a chance after what LSU did to them last week and how dominant Alabama's looked all season long. Well, because Florida has nothing to lose in this point. They get Kyle Pitts back, and they have explosive weapons that are probably very similar to the offense that Ole Miss had. I mean, I, that's the last offense that I've seen that's given this Alabama defense a hard time. We've talked about all the defensive improvement for Alabama. I certainly think there's a lot that's done to change kind of the narrative from where they were early in the season, but they haven't played an offense like they'll play tonight. If Florida's going to be able to, to even be in this ballgame, they're going to have to be much more efficient down in the red zone, finish drives, because they certainly will be able to move the football. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Alabama decides to match up. The first guy you got to think about is Kyle Pitts, but there's so many other weapons out there. Alabama has definitely improved, particularly in the back seven CD with the safeties in the corners and the nickel, Malachi Moore, young guy coming in. But still, this is a different animal, so it's going to be very interesting to see how they attack the Florida offense and how they get pressure on the quarterback, more importantly. A champion will be crowned, and more than likely a Heisman Trophy will be won tonight. So we don't know if it's Mac Jones or Kyle Trask or maybe even Devonta Smith. Thank you, everyone. Just going to disregard you, Najee Harris? see you right there. Thank you for watching. Yes, 22 touchdowns is good. The SEC Halftime Court by Auto Owners Insurance. Starkville, Mississippi, and the Missouri Tigers work to do, trailing MSU by 17. Start of our second half, Don Davenport, Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott on hand. Entertaining first half in the book so far. Yeah, it really was, and I think the miscues were a big part of it. Missouri was booting the ball around a little bit, and I think it was Mississippi State's defensive pressure that also added to this. There was a bad snap, there was a muff punt and all those things, but then Will Rogers went to work. He was surgical-like at times, moved in the pocket, found Wally in the corner of the end zone, and then dropped a dime to Mitchell on the pylon. Will Rogers was operating at a pretty effective level. Bulldogs set to receive the football. Start our third quarter. Rodgers nearly 200 yards through the air, running the air raid. Two touchdowns. How about Merry Christmas to Paul Blackwell, the long snapper who scored his first career touchdown on the muff punt to get Mississippi that State surprising. back in it. Yeah, Mississippi State, you know they don't want to run the football or they don't try to run the football, but I think it's the points off of turnovers that really was the difference. Mississippi State's defensive pressure and then the points off the turnovers really was the difference in this game. I mean, if you're a long snapper and it's a week before Christmas. Who saw that coming? And the pigskin sitting there in the middle of the end zone. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, right? No. Blackwell doesn't even put that on the Christmas list because he knows that's <laughs> basically not going to happen. Santa Claus came early yeah. in Starkville. Here's that, Will Rogers. Was that under the tree or was that in the stocking? We'll have to find that out. <laughs> Time as he sails a pass incomplete looking for Griffin and a couple of flags on the field.
I do want to ask you about your playoff prognostications given what is happening. Holding on the defense, number two. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Break straw the guilty party, and that'll give Bulldogs a first down. Ohio State struggled with Northwestern earlier today. They won it 22 to 10. It was a one possession game throughout most of the fourth quarter. Clemson right now putting it on Notre Dame. Let's just say for a second Notre Dame gets crushed. Does that <laughs> open the door for Texas A&M perhaps to sneak in there? I, I think it actually could. There, there's any question about it. Maybe that's where it comes into play where you haven't played many games that starts to matter to people and we'll have to wait and see what the committee sit thinks. Rodgers to Marks on the swing pass and nothing doing. He stopped at the line. But Philly, I'm, I'm willing to go there with you. I'm willing to entertain that thought. I think that this league that we're, we're here today because this the SEC was all about, hey, we schedule games, we're going to play games, we're going to finish games and end up most likely playing more games than everybody else. And some other conferences decided not to do that. So in the end, if Ohio State didn't leave a good impression to the committee, does it give an opportunity for Texas A&M to sneak in the door? There's a running play. Marks on the delayed handoff stopped at the 40. 69 games will be played in the SEC this season with only two left off the slate. 69 out of 71, that's 97%. That's the best at the FBS level. Why are we here? We're part of that part of that equation, right? This we game are. was scheduled. It was postponed. It was scheduled. The conference championship game is in a couple of hours. And we're in Starkville, Starkville Mississippi to complete the season. I think that's the way you do it. Williams in motion on third and four. And on the swing pass, Tribe continues. Marks makes a man miss into Mizzou territory. Well, I think it's important to remember where we were back on August 11th. Commissioner of the Big Ten, Kevin Warren, said we're not playing this year. Yes, indeed. Pac-12 followed suit. Greg Sankey, commissioner of the SEC, said not so fast. Yes, indeed. It was a delayed start on September 26, but it was a start. And what you know, the Big Ten, the Pac-12 came back on board. That is a significant moment for collegiate sports in 2020. Dylan Johnson barrels ahead, five-yard pickup on first down. And it's worth remembering today on the final day of the regular season of the Southeastern Conference. Yes, it is. And if there was a huge difference between an Ohio State and, say, a, a Texas A&M, we wouldn't really have this argument or have really this debate. But I don't think there is. I don't think there's a significant, significant difference between an Ohio State team right now than a Texas A&M team. So who's played games, who's put themselves out in harm's way in conference play, and that's what we see out of this conference for sure. On second down, back shoulder fade. Pass was there. Mitchell was interfered with. And a late flag on Chris Mills. Yeah, the back shoulder fade. And Mills didn't see the football. And is going to get called for the P.I. right here. And rightly so. So often that happens. It is a difficult Pass to defend is that back Pass shoulder fade. Pass on the defense, number 10. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. We've had really good defensive coaches this year tell us that this is actually why they're going away from man-to-man -man defense is because of the back shoulder fade. It is impossible to defend if it's done well. And Mills found out right there. Then Rodgers took a little ding at the end, but Rodgers timing prevents him from really getting into harm's way a lot in the pocket. He gets rid of the football on time a lot. Opening possession of our second half here in Starkville. Mitchell in motion. Rodgers fakes in his direction. Now swings it out to Mitchell, and Osiris Mitchell ushered out at the 25. That'll be gain of two, maybe three. Not a lot happening. You know, Philly, when we were preparing for this game, I just picked up where we left off, which was, what, the first Saturday of October when Arkansas was here, and just started watching 
kind of the rhythm of the game, play by play, and not really looking to see who's playing and, and breaking it down specifically. But then you you feel a different rhythm to this offense when Rodgers begin to play more. And that's what Mike Leach saw. There's a sense of timing about this young man. K.J. Costello had it for four quarters at LSU way back in week one and then never found it again, including that game and that loss to Arkansas. Griffin hit hard, short of the line to gain. It'll bring up third down and short. Jalen Carlisle's with the stop, and it was a hard hit. So this third down and short, as you've now entered the red zone, is where I would like to see Mississippi State have a run game presence. I think that's the difference that this offense has to show going forward. And we're going to see a review for potentially targeting again. Further review for potential targeting. Now the freshman Jalen Carlisles. He's been effective this year for Mizzou, one of three freshman starters in the defensive backfield for this game. If you lose him, that's going to be awfully difficult to overcome against the air raid. And let's take another look. Well, the good news is you can't get any younger because we have true freshmen all over the place, but it's about the crown of the helmet. Forcible contact, is there an indicator? And in the crown of the helmet variety, the indicator is the crown of the helmet, ducking the head and leading with the crown of the helmet. And then the forcible contact on a defenseless player in this case. It doesn't have to be defenseless, but a receiver catching the football is a defenseless player anyway. And what do you think there, Philly? The contact comes in just below the helmet. This will give us a better look in the angle where that initial hit was made. But remember, with the crown of the helmet. Right, it can be yes, below the head or neck area. It can be in the, the big toenail. But if it's with the crown of the helmet, it's forcible contact, guilty. I think it's close. I think this call is going to stand. After further review, there was targeting by number 17 on the defense. The penalty is half the distance from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Jalen Carlisle's ejected, or rather disqualified this season, no longer ejected. He doesn't have to leave the field. Yeah, one of the nuances, you don't have to take that walk of shame into the locker room. And I like that, by I the way. I do, too. That yeah. was that was nonsense. I don't know where we ever thought that that was a thing. It's not a disqualification as if you threw a punch, and it's an unsportsmanlike. So there certainly should be a distinction. And we saw the shot of Eli Drinkwitz being upset about that. And I don't know if he's just upset at his player for doing the wrong thing, but that was absolutely the right call on the field. Crown of the helmet targeting is something that we have to teach players to eliminate from the game. It's so dangerous. First and goal. Jaquavius Marks in the backfield. He'll get the handoff. Right up the gut. Stop just short. Second and goal from inside the one coming up. Run game presence in the red zone is a beautiful thing. And this is, it's really the dart play. You have a guard that wraps around the center and leads Marks up inside. It's a very kind of sudden, violent box run in the red zone. And that was well done by Mississippi State. Marks again with a crease into the end zone for the touchdown. Second touchdown of the year for the freshman from the ATL. And Philly, mark my word, going forward, I think this is something that Mike Leach is, is really going to grow in entering next season, is the ability to run the football and finish drives. Mike Leach has had 1,000-yard rushes in the past in this air raid offense. Are you serious? Yes, he has. And, but he obviously wants to run the football. I mean, wants to throw the football in a voluminous amount. But you have to be able to finish drives in a physical run game presence, especially in this conference. Bulldogs strike first to start our second half, and the lead expands to 24. 
More cowbell. It's a common theme in Stark Vegas. Lead is 24. What an end to the regular season this would be. Joquavius Marks at Mississippi State and first year head coach Mike Leach if this score holds up. And let me backtrack and I misspoke. I don't know that Mike Leach has ever had a thousand yard rusher, but he's had a collective running back room that were back to back, I believe, thousand yard rushers and thousand yard receivers in the same room. I think that's what this offense needs right now to compete well in this conference. Connor Bazelak back on the field as we check in again with Don Davenport. Well, guys, no rhythm. That's how Eli Drinkwitz described his offense's performance in that first half. He said we couldn't sustain drives. There were protection busts. He pointed out to his guys that we have got to do a better job of helping out our quarterback. I asked him how he felt like he could get into rhythm. He said, I have to call better plays. And also, he said they've got to string some plays together. Now, I do want to point this out, okay? Mizzou's been here before. They yep. put together a 27-point fourth quarter comeback to beat Arkansas two weeks ago. And trailed by two scores in the fourth quarter before coming back. And Hazleton fell down. Two receivers in the area dumb. They've got a fingertip on it at the last second, but that play looked awkward about 30 yards down the field. <laughs> awkward indeed. I don't know exactly what was happening there. You have two receivers. Dove fell down. Or excuse me, uh, Hazleton fell down. Dub was, I think, distracted by the fact that the receiver that was already supposed to clear out fell at his feet. So awkward indeed. Manuel Forbes, Mississippi State player that got a hand on it. Roundtree bottled up. Give him three. It'll be third and long. Well, I would agree with Don's report for sure. This offense for Missouri has looked without rhythm, but... The defense approach, approach Mississippi State and Zach Nordet's offense is predicated on not allowing an offense to get into rhythm, get negative plays, and just make a lot of stuff look nasty. And that's what we've seen out of Missouri's offense today. And how about Nathaniel Watson just recorded his eighth tackle replacing Errol Thompson, who was ejected, disqualified back in the first quarter for targeting. Dub. There was contact, no laundry on the field, and it'll be a three and out for the Mizzou offense. Emmanuel Forbes, what a game this freshman is having. What a season number 13 is having. Yeah, there is not much experience, and Forbes, I think, does a really nice job. The, the throw to the ground came after the ball was already gone, and I think Forbes actually did a nice job of not interfering with Doug too early. He was in position, but that ball was... A high hard one and Forbes stayed out of the way. Can I open the door one more time for the playoff conversation, especially as it pertains to the SEC? Because right now, Notre Dame is losing big against Clemson in the ACC championship game. What could that mean for a team like Texas A&M? I want to explore that. Coming up after this timeout. Punt of 58 yards. Mississippi State gets it right back after this. <laughs> 34 to 10, back in Stark Vegas. Nine to go in our third quarter. Kelly Stopper, Roy Filmbach, Don Davenport. Look at the college football playoff rankings right now. Bama number one, AM at number five. We mentioned it going out to break. Clemson taking Notre Dame to the woodshed. I'm just going to throw this out here. If that score holds, and it's 24 to 3 in Charlotte right now, the ACC title game, and Notre Dame gets its doors blown off, I, I don't want to see the Fighting Irish in Alabama, one versus four in the semifinals early next month. I I'd rather see Texas A&M get in there. I think Notre Dame's got something to prove in that second half to make sure that they're in the conversation tomorrow. I think you might be exactly right, and I think that kind of the image in some people's eyes is Notre Dame's performance the last time they were in the top four. It was 30 to three in the Cotton Bowl against Clemson two years ago. Destroyed by Alabama in the BCS championship yeah. game early in the last decade. So I, not that that plays a role in this season, but Jimbo Fisher said it best after beating Tennessee earlier today, we deserve to be in. Maybe or maybe not that's the case, but let's see what Notre Dame does in the second half of that game. Because I, I think the perception of the Fighting Irish after the ACC title game is important. 
Okay, maybe I'm just spinning my wheels on that one, but I think it's something to watch. Rodgers lost the football. Flag on the play as well. Mizzou says they have it, and they do. Let's check the infraction. I think the infraction is going to be holding against the player that actually ends up knocking the ball away from Will Rogers. Poor ball security in the pocket by the young freshman quarterback nonetheless. Kobe Whiteside jumped on it in a hurry that time, Kelly. The ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by the defense. There was a foul on the play holding number 67 on the offense. That penalty is declined. First down, Missouri. And McGuire knocked it loose when Whiteside corralled it quickly. And McGuire was the one that was getting held. So if you're going to be an offensive lineman and hold somebody, don't let that somebody get to the quarterback and knock the football away. And McGuire ends up doing a lot of good things, getting after the quarterback off the edge and then knocking the football away. He could have had the trifecta if he would have recovered it himself. All right, so don't go anywhere just yet. Mizzou does have comeback ability, as Don documented just a few minutes ago. Chisholm, the man in motion, and now Roundtree back to the edge. That stretch play will net four, maybe five yards. I think this is a great place on the field to see more of Tyler Beatty. Tyler Beatty's more of the scat back running back to offset a workhorse Larry Roundtree part of this offense. And Coach Drink told us that, that they he needed to call more plays and build more touches for Tyler Beatty. This would be a good time to see Tyler Beatty in a game. Maybe the tunnel screen to number one. Beatty in motion. Roundtree inside give and tumbles down to the seven. And I like that. It ended up being a prototypical zone run to the right with Roundtree, but you set up the option to the backside. You can see Basil Black and the pitch man Beatty going off the backside. And what they're doing is they're gathering intel to see how it was defended. And you may come back with something like that here shortly. They got to stop gathering intel and start scoring touchdowns. That would be a good idea. Roundtree now at 100 yards. Chisholm in motion. Roundtree straight ahead on third down. Needed three. Now let's see where they spot it. Needed to get inside the five, and he's right there. Well, if he doesn't get it, this is certainly four-down territory when you're down 34 to 10. And your offense has had, like, zero rhythm. And I'm not exactly sure what Coach Drink was doing there, but I'm assuming he was signaling in a play. But someone was being spanked fourth and inches. Basilak straight ahead and not a lot of movement nor a surge at the line of scrimmage. Flag on the field as well. The line judge threw a flag early so the defense may actually have been off sides. <laughs> Waiting on the call from David Smith. Our veteran officiating crew out of the SEC. I'm going to go back to Coach Drink signaling that thing in. He was, someone was getting spanked in that signal, and I'd like to know what that play call was. Offside on the defense, on the left side of the defensive line, half the distance to the goal, first down. Costly. In the defense, the line judge is looking literally right down the line of scrimmage. And so when you get into that neutral zone with your hand or helmet. I didn't see it. It's hard to see if you're not right down the line. That might have been clear outside. Basilak across the middle, wide open for the touchdown. Kiki Chisholm, first of the season. And a big win indeed as Mizzou is right back in it. A great job of Basilak going through his progression. Chisholm is on the back side and is actually the third look. On the front side, Parker was going to the flat, and the other tight end, Swinson, was going to the corner. And you can see the quarterback look there initially and then come back to his third receiver. Trailing by 18, Mizzou's going to go for two to try to make it a two-possession game. Dove in motion. Basilak will roll out, throws low, passes caught. Chisholm has it. 34-18. to 18. Eight 
on the board for number six on that possession. And Missouri trying to rally on the road in Starkville. They've got a chance. Kiki Chisholm, touchdown reception, two-point conversion. Missouri now trailing by two scores on the road. Plenty of time remaining back in Starkville with Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Don Davenport on the sidelines. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. We're still playing ball on December 19th, if you can believe that. And into the end zone for touchback. Bulldogs will get it. At their 25, don't forget, coming up 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central, the SEC Nation crew back in business, wrapping up four afternoon matchups. Then after the championship game in the ATL, they'll get you ready to go for everything that has gone down today with SEC football final. Right after the Gators and the Crimson Tide. Of course, you can always watch it on the ESPN app if you're out and about. Nobody covers the SEC like we do. And what a time to be alive in 2020 with everything that is happening on the gridiron today. Controversy perhaps in store tomorrow on Selection Day. Will Rogers, pocket collapses. He escapes and is tripped up. He's going to lose a couple. And Isaiah McGuire sneak it in there. Make it second and long. And something that we didn't see a lot of in that first half is a three-man rush actually getting pressure on Will Rogers. And that's been a problem for Mississippi State this year. A lot of people rushing three, dropping eight, and people being successful with getting pressure with three. We didn't see that out of Missouri in the first half. We saw it right there on that play. Dylan Johnson, the running back. Williams in motion on second and 11. Middle is open. Mitchell is there. That'll bring up third down and manageable. That's that mesh route. The, probably the number one most called route by Mike Leach in this offense. You have two crossers, and then when it's zone coverage, those crossers, once they mesh past one another, they actually settle down and become really good targets against zone coverage. Did you see who made the tackle there? No. Sean Robinson, the former quarterback. Is that right? Number 12 on the field. It's safety. Started the first two games at quarterback this season for Mizzou, right? That is unbelievable. Play action on third down. Rodgers has a man wide open. Wally has it. First down, Bulldogs. Rumbles ahead after a gain of 38 yards. MSU in business once again. And Wally did a great job of setting the middle safety. And even though Rodgers gets pressure, the ball gets loose. And Wally sets that safety who thought he was going to cross his face and go on a over route across the field, but Wally sets him and then goes over the top, and Will Rogers got it off just in time. Jelani Williams stopped the touchdown. Mississippi State in business. Dylan Johnson barrels ahead. Inside the 25, it'll be second and four. Are we seeing a, a new Mike Leach? Running the football to some extent. I, I always think back to his time at Wazoo, especially a year ago with Anthony Gordon. They would get the ball out quickly on the swing routes, and it felt like a yeah. ground game with the quick tosses. I, I don't know that it's been like that this year. But, but you're right. It, that's what it's supposed to be. The, this quick screen game is supposed to be kind of the supplement to the run game. Speaking of ground game, another first down. Dylan Johnson all of a sudden with a hot hand. How about that play sheet right there? About three by five, all kinds of mess on there. It's all wrinkled and folded up paper, but he could call plays in this offense in his sleep. And I'm not so sure that doesn't happen from time to time. <laughs> Back in the red zone, MSU. Rodgers claps for it twice. Fade route, back corner. It's not open that time. Malik Keith was covered. And no real estate as Rake Straw was all over him. I mean, Mike Leach doesn't want to run it. That's not in the air raid DNA, but I don't know. Maybe it's a different version of coach here at the end of the year. And maybe he's just kind of setting the table for what lies ahead. I, I honestly think in order for the air raid to compete well, in the SEC, you have to have 
a physical run presence at times for certain reasons. And closing out drives or picking up first downs are a couple of those reasons. Marks and Johnson in the backfield. Two backs back there. This one back corner. Wally, did he corral it? No, it was intercepted. Mizzou comes away with a turnover. Joshua Bledsoe. That'll be his first pick of his senior season and a big time play for the Mizzou D. And Roy, we've seen this matchup multiple times. Bledsoe is a safety that drops down and covers the slot at times. And Wally's just going over the top to the corner and then the Wiley veteran experienced Bledsoe cuts underneath it. He essentially runs the route better than the route runner Wally runs the route and then he finishes on the football. Mississippi State, back-to-back -back possessions, ending in turnovers. And as a quarterback, you just give that to good defense. You don't like throwing interceptions, but as a quarterback, I'm thinking, I kind of threw that thing where I wanted to, but Bledsoe made a really good play. And we've got rain on the way, but this one far from over as Roundtree scampers out of bounds after a nice gain on first down. Those two turnovers in the first half, Mississippi State scored 13 points. So right now you get that turnover, and we'll see if Missouri can do likewise. 24-point game just a few minutes ago. All of a sudden, that seems like a long time ago, and Uncle Mo now with Mizzou. Roundtree motions out. Second and four. Basilak across the middle, wide open. Bannister. And that'll move the chains. And Philly, I don't know that we have still seen consistent rhythm out of this Drinkwitz offense, as Don talked about. The coach Drink didn't like the rhythm, but that last scoring drive may have opened up something a little bit. And it's funny how a certain drive or plays on a drive kind of settle a defense or an offense in, and you find that rhythm or you feel that rhythm more than you have earlier in the game. After a gain of 12, play action, Basilak floats one, plus territory. That one's going to be intercepted. Mississippi State's defense responds. And the pick by Colin Duncan. Second of the season for the sophomore from Montgomery, Alabama. And this is a poor decision. It's a really good finish on the ball by Duncan, and Duncan had good coverage, but this is a poor decision. This didn't have a chance as Bannister stopped, tried to go upfield, but the coverage by Duncan is over the top the whole time. There was a cap on that route from the get-go, and that's just a poor decision to go there by a young quarterback in Basilac. Now, Colin Duncan has the Stark Vegas turnover chain ready to go. His brother, of course, plays in the NFL after starring at Vanderbilt. And the younger Duncan doing a nice job in his sophomore campaign here in the Magnolia State. Well, this game has seen a little bit of everything. We have long snap for touchdowns. Big plays for Will Rogers. And the Mississippi State defense. Big plays on the ground. Marks powers his way ahead across the 45. That's a gain of 12. First drive was a punt for Mississippi State, and, and then they got going. Last two drives, a little shaky. But what I do like is the run game. If that's for real, how many rushing yards does Mississippi State have currently? 91. I mean, that's unheard of. What do they have coming into this game? Something like averaging 23, I believe, coming into this football game. Lowest total in the FBS in nearly 12 seasons. Yes, indeed. That's not good. Rodgers wants it all. Griffin comes back to it and makes the grab at the 17. LaDietrich Griffin, a big-time reception and a gain of 38 for MSU. Youngster on youngster. Griffin, the true freshman, and Rakestraw on the coverage. And it was somewhat underthrown, but a tremendous adjustment on the football by the freshman Griffin. And this one appears to be Previous coming plays back. Under further review, the ruling on the field was the pass was incomplete. Well, I thought he got there, and I thought he had both hands underneath it coming back to it perfectly. We'll have another look ourselves. 
Yeah, clear possession with the hands. I don't think so. I mean, do you see enough to overturn because it's indisputable video evidence? Maybe this will be our look right here by our director, Timothy Sutton. I don't know. The legs get in the way, so. That looks like a catch to me. I think it is. I think the, the hands are underneath the football. Doesn't touch the ground as best we can tell. I know the call in the field was incomplete, but I think that's enough. That's indisputable video I evidence. I think you're right. I'm going with you, and the ball can touch the ground as the receiver catches it as long as the ball doesn't move once the receiver has possession. And I think Griffin should get credit for a catch on that block. He's a four-star player coming out of high school, Philadelphia, Mississippi. You know, Philly, transpose this receiving group having maybe another birthday going into next season. And Griffin, you know, more of an alpha receiver outside at an X position. And then Wally being that slot guy that we've seen get open and... Hey, Osiris Mitchell could come back another year if he wants to. He could do that, no question. And he may want to do that knowing the... The number of balls that are in it in the air when Mike Leach is calling a game. That is a total wild card for 2021. Which seniors decide to come back to play another year? After further review, the ruling on the field stands of an incomplete pass. I just disagree. We'll Mitchell Wilkins, our replay on the official. Yard line on the left half. I understand that not enough there to maybe overturn the call but you go back and watch the ball's not moving around yeah I, I don't I don't agree with it either that that certainly seemed like there was indisputable video evidence right there can you tell whether the ball's touching the ground or not I believe you can based on where yeah. the ball is when the receiver moves once again yeah forearm was underneath it initially no contact was made it can move around as long as it's not touching the ground yep what are we doing? And I think we missed one. Well, Second we down. We got one right. It's a break for Mizzou. See if they can take advantage. Austin Williams says no. That's another first down as he's driven backwards by Nicholson at the last minute. Give him 18. And Williams is another guy that had 37 catches coming into the day. He plays the Y position, which is a, a letter given to the slot receiver in this offense. You have... You have the Y, you have the A or the H, and the Y is slot receivers in the air raid. And Williams is a pretty nifty guy that can find some space. I'm not sure how to call all of these running plays. I, I didn't come here. What is that all about? To see Marks rush for all of these yards in the second half. Why exactly did you come here? <laughs> I like football, that's why. You know, Santa Claus is bringing Starkville under Mike Leach a run game as this season's closing out. What are we doing? What are we doing? Final play of our third quarter. It's been a fun start. Eli Drakewitz has some work to do. Trying to come back on the road. The regular season finale in the SEC. MSU on the move again. And we've got more fireworks ahead. 15 to go here in Starkville. Just about two hours away until we see Dan Mullen, the Florida Gators. We can live look at them at Mercedes-Benz Stadium getting ready to take on the Alabama Crimson Tide. And God, guys, not only will the SEC champion be crowned, but probably a Heisman Trophy award winner as well. Back here at Starkville, Mississippi, start of our fourth quarter. Davis Wade Stadium rocking as best as it can, limited capacity. MSU on the move. Marks tripped up inside the 15. That's another big gainer and a first down for the Bulldogs. And another successful run by Mike Leach in this offense. It's extraordinary what they're discovering here, but I think Marks has the ability to be this kind of guy in this offense. You ready for this with that last run by Marks? Bulldogs over 100 yards on the ground for the first time this season, for the first time under Mike Leach.
and I think it's it's there to be had in the way that the air raid is being defended, especially the pure air raid that people talk about Mike Leach running, which is he really ignores the box a lot of times. The air raid in other forms really is built on a box count. And if we spread the field and have potential of five receivers in the field, if we have an advantageous box count, five or less, we run the football into that. Mike Leach doesn't do that often. We're seeing him doing it now. Mark Stout with 62 yards on the ground. He's on the field. This one towards the end zone. It's going to be caught. Back corner for the touchdown. Brad Cumbus, second reception of the season, and the first touchdown for the sophomore from Hurley, Mississippi. Cumbus is essentially a converted tight end. Another one of those guys. Spivey might be one, and Cumbus is a big body outside, runs a fade that I think just caught Manuel by surprise. Now, Compass has been known to play a little baseball in these parts. He tracked that one down like a center fielder. And Mississippi State seizing control to start our fourth quarter. What a game for Will Rogers. Almost 300 yards through the air. He's thrown for three scores, and number two signals number one here tonight. Forty-one, eighteen, thirteen, twenty-six remaining back in Starkville. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpot, Don Davenport trying to stay warm down on the sideline. We're happy you are with us tonight. The regular season finale in the Southeastern Conference. Playing football in mid-December and Mike Leach running the football in mid-December. What are we doing? Ooh-wee, yeah. I think this is something certainly that Mike Leach's offense can carry over into post-COVID 2020. I think it would work well for this group. Kickoff sales out of bounds. It'll be good field position for Mizzou. It's the last Saturday of the regular season, so represent your school one more time. Show us how big you're going today. Submit your best fan video this weekend to hashtag show your Saturday. And it just might get you your 15 seconds of fan fame. Hashtag show your Saturday. We love it. Tigers will get it at the 35. And not a lot of time to work with considering a new deficit of three scores. Bazelak, Beatty with a one-handed grab, and he's tripped up after a gain of four. How about that catch? You talk about Beatty being dynamic with the ball in his hands and the one-handed behind the head catch left-handed. Check this out, the degree of difficulty. How about that? And somewhat casual about it. Ever since Odell Beckham Jr. Kind of pulled out the one-handed grab, arching backwards towards the end zone behind his head. It just seems like it's in vogue and everybody practices it. And everybody tends to be able to pull it off at a decent level. Third down coming up. Tigers have won five out of seven coming into this game tonight. Still going to a pretty good bowl game, probably somewhere down in sunny Florida. This is not the way they wanted the regular season to come to an end. That pass nearly picked off. They poked away at the last minute. Colin Duncan had a pick earlier tonight, his second of the season. He's pretty good here. And Bannister was running an option route and coming from the inside back outside. Some people call it a Q route, but Duncan undercut the route and knocked that ball down. They're going for it. Why not? I can't think of a good reason not to. Trailing by 23, running out of time in our fourth quarter. Fourth and seven for Mizzou. Time for Basilak. 
fires a pass. And incomplete. Chisholm in the area. That one nowhere close. Forbes had the coverage. Mississippi State's going to take over with prime field position. Bulldogs looking impressive. Regular season finale in Starkville. Well, it feels like a brand new Mike Leach tonight. 41 to 18, the Bulldogs leading Mizzou. Kelly Stopper, Roy Philpott, Don Davenport. And we say he's a new man because it's been the ground game that's gotten going. Yeah, and time will tell, but take note of all of the light boxes. Usually just five defenders in the box, and it's begging you to run the football. And sometimes I think Mike Leach has been kind of stubbornly resistant to running it in that box. But if you have a guy like Jaquavius Marks, true freshman that has a feel for it, I think this offense could benefit greatly from running against looks like that. Wheel route, Dylan Johnson was open for a minute. Instead, he'll go underneath and a short gain with a penalty marker down as well. So Lee Witherspoon records the reception to check the penalty. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 90. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Markel Utsi, the guilty party. Well, one more score here, and it's going to put this one away. But it hasn't happened already. Who did you say you had tonight in the championship game? Alabama, like, big. Roll tight roll, like, like, by 20? They're already rolling. The game hasn't even started yet. Yeah, I think it might be more than that. But I think Alabama has been head and shoulders the best team, most consistent team all year. Agreed. Watching them defensively has been the difference for me. We knew Mac Brown, I think, would be up to the challenge beginning of this year, but defensively, they, they look like roll tide of the old. Dylan Johnson reverses his field a couple of times, plunges inside the 20, a gain of six, maybe seven. I think their defense after Old Miss started to grow up, started to change, because close your ears, Mississippi State fans. Lane Kevin kind of put it on Nick Saban yeah. in that one game. Yeah. And then since then, it's been lights out and reminds you of Bama four or five years ago on that side of the ball. Yeah, and I think I just called Mac Jones, Mac Brown. Oh, did you? There is a difference there for everyone that's listening. But uh, we were in to watch Mac Jones take over after two was hurt, literally that next week. And we got to visit with him, and he's a cool dude and really kind of walks the walk and talks the talk and all those things. We had his first start. It was against Western Carolina last year after the Tua injury. We spent about half an hour with him in the Alabama football offices. Could not have come away more impressed because he was just ready for the moment. And this season, after an offseason preparing to be the starter in Tuscaloosa, he was even more ready. And that's one of the reasons he's one of the leading candidates to win the Heisman. Yeah, I think the uh, odds on favorite at this point in time. And committed to going to Alabama, knowing that Tua was already on his way and Jalen Hurts was still there. And he didn't bat an eye at that. Johnson motions out, Rodgers back to the air. Pass is going to be almost picked off. It came out at the last second, and that was Sean Robinson, the former quarterback. How about that? Playing safety. Wasn't Sean number three as a quarterback? He was. He's 12 as a defensive back, and he does a great job of jumping this route. You can see the route that comes in and sets in front of Robinson, and the route that was supposed to clear Robinson out went by his right shoulder. He didn't go with that route and then jumped the underneath route. Really good job of diagnosing that. He's got four a, tackles today. For a quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. Reese on for the field goal. And he drives it through. And our new score. 11-13 remaining, 44-18. to While we have a break in the action, let's throw to Laura Rutledge and our friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors.
So I know you're probably trying to figure out where to get your Christmas gifts, and I have the answer for you right here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. They have everything that you might need, including trampolines. Let's just not wait to wrap up the trampoline, put it under the tree. Just go ahead and get it right now so you can have fun all season long, right? No doubt about it. Eli Drinkwit searching for answers. We mentioned it earlier. They're going to go to a good bowl game. You know, you, you put together a winning mark in SEC play this year. It's going to happen. Probably the Outback, maybe the Citrus. We'll see. I think Mississippi State's going to have a chance to do some things in postseason play as well. Where and when? We're not going to find out until tomorrow, but I think they are ready to accept the bowl invitation if it is extended. And I think probably will be given all the teams that have opted out and everything else going on. I, I would think so. And I think both of these coaches that are trying to get their programs in place in their respective locations. I think they look forward to another outing to, you know, there's nothing like live reps for a young football team. And I think they will play well in bowl games. Well, the early signing period getting underway this past Wednesday. National Signing Day. Both of these programs leaving their respective marks. A couple of ESPN 300 signees for Mizzou, including Travion Four. That was a big acquisition along the defensive line. And you see those two commitments out of the ESPN 300. That's a big deal for Eli Drinkwitz. And they're trying to shut off the borders of the Show Me State in the future. Yeah, and you see wide receiver defensive end is there top two and he needs an eraser outside a wide receiver to make big plays and then get pressure on the line of scrimmage wide open big gainer for Mizzou into MSU territory that's dumb with the grab we send you down to Don Davenport who has more hey guys you, you know we talk about first year head coaches here in the SEC and everybody wants to talk about Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss and Mike Leach and Sam Pittman and what he's done at Arkansas and Eli Drinkwitz I think has swagger you watch him follow him on Twitter some of his tweets he talked about Mary Flipmus before uh, signing day I've talked to some of his players and and they told me that he is a great fit here Larry Roundtree pointed out drinks passion for the game he said you're gonna see it every single day from him a few weeks ago in the middle of practice coach drink stopped and said, do you guys know how much I love my job? Do you guys know how much I love coaching you guys? Roundtree told me that it's the process for him, the preparation that Drink's passionate about, but I feel like that's contagious. And like I said, I think Eli Drinkwitz has some swagger. We're gonna be talking a lot about him in the next couple of years. Yeah, you saw the coach Drinkwitz sweatshirt that he wore just the other day. He called the media core there in uh, Kobo bunch of Debbie Downers for not asking him about it, but he said, you know, they're so focused with the task at hand, he understood why. But you love the, the sense of humor, and, you know, he's firing back at other coaches, doing their thing, and I think it's a good fit in the SEC East. And he talked to us about the importance in this environment we've been in, COVID-2020 and the season plays out in the midst of all that. The importance of keeping a fun atmosphere for these young men to play in, and I really like the way he tried to do that. Hazleton was open for a minute. It'll bring up fourth down. Forbes in coverage. Pass is incomplete. You just go for it again, right? Absolutely. Another thing that Coach Drink told us when our producer, Mike Moore, asked him about what you learned during this tumultuous time, the need for flexibility, amen to that, Offseason conditioning is critical, and this set of circumstances proved it. And then we need to upgrade our support in mental health and well-being for student athletes. And absolutely right on in all three of those things. Chisholm motions out. He'll send it inside to Bannister. That'll be enough, more than enough, for a first down for Mizzou. Well, the good news is for both of these teams, you're ranking inside the top 40 terms of the SEC recruiting rankings. The bad news is still a lot of teams in front of you doing an incredible job as well. So the talent level will be upgraded at these two schools. It's also happening at other locales around the conference, as you would expect. Chisholm will give Mizzou a first down and goal, and you see Bama doing what Bama does at the very top. Yeah, it's, it's hard to compete recruiting-wise when you're trying to build a program in these locations. 
you can be in the top 30 and how about the, the effort? bottom of your conference. Larry Roundtree, a couple of spin moves. He hit the X button twice, and that's enough for the touchdown, his second of the game. No give up in number 34 in all white today. He's another guy that we wondered about before the game. You know, he's a senior, Whoop. and this is a year, yeah, a couple of spins. I've seen that on tape, too, and he has a really good spin move. But he's a senior. Eligibility-wise, this year doesn't exist, so theoretically he could come back. I wouldn't anticipate that happening. Running backs only have so much tread on the tires, and he has the ability, I think, to leave now and go get paid. So that's probably what the people around him are advising him to do. But I think he's going to be a really good pro. The review, the ruling on the field was the runner scored a touchdown. Indeed, it did look like he scored a touchdown. What are we missing, Philly? I don't know if he may have been had a knee down, perhaps, at that last possible plunge. One more look. Second spin move. Actually, did his knee go down on the first one? I don't think so. That's a touchdown. Yeah, no doubt. He kept the knees off, and it's anything except the foot and the hand. And he extended at the right time, and I think got the football across before anything else hit the ground. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Round tree, 23 carries, a buck 14, two scores. I don't want to get picky because I'm kind of in the holiday mood and, and somewhat jolly tonight, but that should be a confirm, right? I mean, what are we talking about? I, it's nitpicking, but come on. Can I add to that for a moment? I would rather you not because I really liked what I just said. All right. Thank you. Sometimes people need to tell me to shut up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you go ahead and wax poetically when we come back from break in about five seconds. with a studio update outside the footprint. Well, we were kind of curious what would happen if Notre Dame beat Clemson twice. Well, how about Clemson just absolutely looting, routing the Fighting Irish. 31-3 to now, all Tigers over the Irish. of that game matter tomorrow on Selection Day. If Notre Dame can't score a touchdown tonight, do they deserve to be in the college football playoff getting blown out by 40 points? Comes an onside kick for Mizzou. They're going to switch it up here. Ketting. The perfect hop, and it's corralled quickly by Austin Williams. With the good hands team pays dividends. Are you buying what I'm selling? Because you looked at me skeptically early no, on. No, I'm buying what you're selling. The, the question for me is, I don't like the optics either. And If you can't score a touchdown tonight, we got a problem. We, we wouldn't be talking about this if Trevor Lawrence played the first game. And so that also means something. And the optics are bad, but can you take a team that was number two in the top four by the committee and drop them all the way out when we have a team setting it four coming into this week that played half the games of the other of the others that are being considered. I it's a baffling situation if you ask me. Marks picks up five on first down into Mizzou territory. Will Rogers remains on the field. He was stopped by Nicholson. I just think it's a conversation tomorrow before everybody goes ahead and writes in with their pin. Notre Dame is in the college football playoff in 2020. I, I, I've got my doubts right now. Call me crazy, but I do. I don't think you're totally crazy. I think you're about <laughs> halfway there because this is the thing. Notre Dame is still going to be a one-loss team that split with the ACC champion. But the end result of tonight, if the score holds, leads you to believe that if Trevor Lawrence and oh, those no other doubt. three defensive players that missed the first game were there, that they would have two losses. I'm with you. That was double overtime on the road in that game back on November 7th. Yeah, double overtime. And I'm buying what you're selling. I'm with you. I just can't believe that the committee is going to drop a name like Notre Dame completely out of the mix when they were number two. I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. I'm just saying I don't believe it's going to happen. Alabama sitting right there. 
rubbing its two hands together and thinking, okay, we'll, we'll take one versus four down in New Orleans in that first semifinal. And uh, we think we can handle our business against the Golden Domers there, potentially. Mark stripped up on third and short. It'll bring up fourth down. Sean Robinson, another stop. And number 12's having himself quite a night. Yeah, how about that? How about the quarterback that actually started the first two games of this season, for crying out loud? It isn't like this happened last year. And he becomes a defensive back, more of a safety type guy, playing more of a safety slash linebacker and getting it done. We had him at TCU in one of his starts for Gary Patterson back in the day. That was two years ago now. As he, I think he had eight starts for Coach Pat. And now look at him. He's tackling everybody on the field. Bulldogs call a timeout. We'll take one with him. 44-25, less than seven to play here in Starkville. Burns with a studio update, a fantastic game between LSU and Ole Miss and Baton Rouge in the rain. Max Johnson hadn't turned the ball over once this season. That's number one. Keedron Smith with a big interception, saving points for the Rebels. 41-40, so a lot of time left in the fourth. Oh, my. Woo. Playing football at this late hour. Final day of the regular season. Championship game later tonight. PB, thank you very much back in Starkville. Bulldogs going to punt it away. Kelly Stauffer, Roy Philpott, Don Davenport here to wrap things up. On what has been a beautiful Saturday night in the Magnolia State. Rain on the way. It has held off so far. We'll see if that continues as Mizzou gets it at its own one-yard line. And Bowman did a nice job there to pin the Tigers deep. That's Reed Bowman, the transfer from Texas Tech. Blackwell continuing to feel good about life after that <laughs> touchdown earlier tonight. Merry Christmas, 43. Yeah, Merry he's Christmas. wondering where he gets his next touch to try to score another touchdown. <laughs> where are my touches? You can't build touches for long snappers very often. Right. And, I mean, they snap the ball and they get a touch it, but scoring variety are I mean, essentially non-existent. He's got to be the special teams player of the week, right, in the SEC? <laughs> when your long snapper scores a touchdown, yeah. It, it's just, it's got to be you. Got to throw it out there. Chisholm, reception. Stop short of the 10 for a short game. Approaching six to play. Missouri going to fall to five and five and back to back losses after the setback against Georgia last week. You know, we asked Eli Drinkwitz an interesting question. What do you do with the tape of that game from the second half? Do you just bury it, not really worry about it? How do you handle it? And his response, Kelly, I thought was interesting. Yeah, he said that no, you got to own your performance. So we compete with the elite in one half and we're dreadful in the second half. That That's really who, an accurate depiction of who they are currently. Yeah. And he knows that as well as anybody. And they need more bodies on the line of scrimmage and they need playmakers outside. And they might be competing with the Georges of the world in the second half from next year. Off the pump bank, that pass is intercepted. Emmanuel Forbes does it again. Near sideline for the pick six. Boy, number 13 has all kinds of potential the coming seasons. And he is showing it once again tonight. An inexperienced back end for Mississippi State needs some dudes to show up. And Emmanuel Forbes, I believe, is one of those guys. He has the length that you like as an SEC corner at six foot tall. And then he just sinks underneath that route. Initially, he was holding on the flat route. And then he continued to get depth underneath that corner route when there wasn't a threat short and he ended up picking off the football that was well done by a true freshman second pick six of the season second interception tonight fourth int overall by the way he's a freshman pretty good 51 25 msu doubling up bazoo here at home well there's a boatload of freshmen that have gotten valuable playing time in a season that essentially isn't going to exist when it's all said and done, but it may be the underpinning for good things to come going forward. Most points scored by Mississippi State all season. Give them the Stark Vegas turnover chain. And there's a lot to feel good about. Here's the thing. 
win this game, which you will, and maybe the bowl game, things start to change in terms of perception. Tomorrow it's 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Speaking of bowls, the SEC now bowl special. In-depth look at SEC teams playing in the postseason, plus the preview of the college football playoff semis with team breakdowns, comprehensive analysis like only the SEC now team can provide. And, of course, also on the ESPN app. I like that group right there, by the way. SEC now. Dari, Chiz, CD, good dudes. CD has to work hard to keep up with those other two. I know that, <laughs> but I'm sure he's up to the task. We spent some time with Chris Doring, spring game in Arkansas a couple yeah. of years ago. Good dude and always a lot of fun to catch good. up with those guys. Yeah, he's good at what he does, too. Could catch a football in his day. Well, Mike Leach. Yeah, can I bring this up? You know, you win tonight, you double up Mizzou at home. Let's say you get a bowl invite tomorrow, you, you win a bowl game. You know, four and seven year one feels a lot different than what two and seven felt like before today. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. And the four and seven is because you're improving as the season went along. And right. I think uh, Will Rogers in particular changed the trajectory of this offense, which Mike Leach is certainly all about. And they're playing really good defense. And I think that's been somewhat undersold is Zach Arnett's defensive ability. I think this defense is going to show itself well in this conference in years, years ahead. Batted away at the last minute. And that was Jay Jemison. See, Philly, the, the thing that you have going on right now with Mike Leach and now his defensive coordinator, Zach Arnett, is both of them have the unorthodox description in the way that they go about things. But you can win in the margins to some extent. You don't have to be out recruiting Alabama, Georgia, Florida, because, by the way, that's not going to happen. But you can kind of build your niche in the recruiting world, and then win just a different way. That's where the air raid offense came about, by the way, is willing to do things differently and win with different players that are maybe undervalued by the rest of the people. And then you get Zach Arnett that Rocky Long had the same moniker, is an outside of the box thinker and unorthodox. Well, you have those two things going together, and it's looking pretty good tonight. Round tree over 100 yards for the fifth time this season. No real estate available that time. Stacked up, driven backwards. Martin Emerson got there first after a loss of two. How about that senior warrior giving it all he has in a game like this? That is a conference game happening late in the season, postponed weeks ago and then you have that young man out there selling out for his crew once again that's good stuff Mump putt flag on the field back to mizzou we'll check the penalty that may be kitch, catch, <laughs> kick catch interference easy for me to say no question about it you have to give arm length shoulder to shoulder for the catcher to be able to catch that punt, and that certainly was not the case right there. Kick catch interference on the kicking team, number 49. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Mississippi State. It'll stay with MSU. You know, we asked Mike Leach this week to take one more look, and I mean, right in his grill, that's an easy call. Do you compare your first season here to what you went through in Pullman, Washington at Washington State in your first campaign? Because there's a losing record there, and he said it's very similar. But the difference is we didn't have spring practice to come together as a team. We didn't have off-season workouts to be able to get together collectively and install the air raid the way that we wanted to. Yeah, we could attempt to do it over Zoom, but that is a lot different than even what the first year in Pullman, Washington was about back on the Peluso, it was more difficult, even if the end results stay the same. But you get a chance to close the season strong, potentially in a bowl game after this, and we'll see if that happens, of course. We don't know yet, but thought around these parts is that it could. K.J. Costello checks into the game and delivers a pass incomplete. Heavy contact against Spivey. 
and no flag. Bulldogs recruiting efforts. We mentioned Sawyer Robertson. ESPN 300 ranked as the number 54 player in the country out of Texas. He committed way back last winter and held through on that pledge for signing the early signing period this past Wednesday. And there's a lot of excitement surrounding him, and he's going to compete against Will Rogers next year. Yeah, that will be an interesting competition because Will Rogers seems to possess the skill set that Mike Leach likes, and we'll see how that plays out. Costello, a little sidearm delivery, and that pass is intercepted, I believe, off the carom. It was. Is that our guy, Sean Robinson? Rolling on the field was ball? an interception by the defense. First down, Missouri. I think Kobe Whiteside may have gotten a big paw on it, and then Robinson, I think, ran underneath it. Let's have another look. No, it was Robinson. Look at that play. Robinson did it all. He did it all. He blew up that tunnel screen. Detected it early, get to it quickly is the key on that tunnel screen. Chase that receiver back inside. Robinson does that. And then how about the ball skills to end up with that one in your right armpit on the ground? That's fantastic stuff by a former quarterback. Almost had an interception back in the third quarter as well. He's a redshirt junior. And, uh, you know, he's the former Gatorade Player of the Year in Texas, again, as a quarterback. Now he's playing safety. You know, you see that a lot where quarterbacks are converted to a menagerie of different things come college time, high school quarterbacks. But you don't see that after a 10 starts in college football and two of them coming earlier this season, now you convert to the other side of the ball, not a different offensive position. And look at that young man. Hay with the last reception. Elijah Young is spun down short of the 25. See, I've had a recruiting template for coaches for years. When in doubt, recruit a quarterback and make them something else. Because the way that quarterbacks are taught the game of football, they have a kind of a holistic understanding of the game. And so you can plug them into different positions, and they generally, if they can physically do whatever position you're asking them to do, they can pick up the X's and O's part of it quite well. Holistically understanding the game, that guy right there, right? He, oh my goodness. He's in that category, right? Yeah. He holistically understands things that you and I don't even know what he's talking about sometimes, but I love every minute of it. You've got the best out of Coach Leach this year. Dangerous pass. That's going to be caught for a touchdown. Nico Hay somehow corralled it for his second score of the season. I mean, there was triple coverage all around him. That was like a Hail Mary with two minutes and 34 seconds. It was an ill-timed jump by the defender in front of Hay right there just a little bit too soon and then something hits Hay right in the chest that wasn't expected. Roughing the passer penalty. I mean Hay just like a power forward claiming a rebound off yeah. the glass comes sailing in there. Why not for the putback? Throw it down big fella. <laughs> Hey, speaking of hoops, Mizzou basketball is going to be really good, be good this year. Yeah, they're in the ranked inside the top 16 already. But Conzo Martin's got it going on in Como. Mavis off for the point after, and that's good. 51-32, 2:34 to go. Well, Basilac's been under pressure a lot. This particular pressure is a step and a half late. I don't know that it was that vicious, but the result was to Basilak's liking. Throw the ball up, and sometimes good things happen, sometimes they don't. But in that case, Hay came down with it. Roughing the passer against Jordan Davis. They'll assess that infraction on the kickoff. At one more time, I do think it's worth mentioning. Final regular season game in the SEC tonight here in Starkville and also down in Baton Rouge between LSU and Ole Miss. Four months ago, we didn't think we were going to be here. 
And a lot of people thought this season wasn't going to happen. At the end of it all, 71 SEC regular season games were set to be played. Of those 71, 69, in fact, were played, 97 percent. Kevin Warden said no back on August 11th. The Big Ten thought everybody was going to follow their lead. The Pac-12 did. This conference did not, and that was big time in making sure that we were going to have a college football season this Amen, year. Brother. Commissioner Greg Sankey, tip of the cap. What a great job done by everybody involved with the Southeastern Conference making a difference and giving us what we know and love. We just about got every single game in. Onside kick. The lead was out of bounds. Let's see how they rule this. It did take the high bounce, which is what you want to see. This is going to be interesting because the player streaking down the sideline for Missouri, I think, attempted to bat this ball back inbounds which would make it a legal play if Missouri ends up coming down with it. Chisholm did it. The question is whether Chisholm was out of bounds before that. His left foot may have been out of bounds, which disqualifies him from being able to knock that ball back inbounds for his teammates to recover. There's green in between his foot I'm good. and the sideline. I'm good. This is a good play. Chisholm a very heads up play. Knock it back inbounds if the ball was out of his hands before Chisholm came back down out of bounds. I think that's a tremendous play that should stand or actually should be overturned. I mean, Mike Leach just sitting there. He's got a great angle on it. And Chisholm, I mean, incredible athleticism there. Mike Leach ends up trying to get out of the oh. way. Not so much. <laughs> Coach Leach. Needed to start that escape a little bit earlier than he managed there. Now, there's no illegal batting or a scenario like that here, no, right? He no. saves it inbounds. It, exactly. As long as he's not out of bounds right there with that left foot, this is this is a green light. On the kicking team, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. The wheel re-kick. That was my only concern. Uh, I'd have to give it get a definition of that. I guess it's because it's been kicked. I don't, I need to get Rogers ready on the horn and ask him to interpret that for me. I want to put a bow on that last conversation. Nobody thought we were going to be here mid-December, wrapping up the regular season, championship weekend on the verge of the college football playoff selection day tomorrow. Here we are. And yes, it wasn't easy, but we got it done. Yeah, we, we've heard some incredible stories throughout the season. Coaches, players, you know, our bosses at ESPN trying to, you know, use duct tape it sometimes to try to get things on the air and things are being canceled, postponed left and right. And at the end of the day, this is why I think it should matter for people that have played a lot of games. You just talked about the percentage, 97% for the SEC. Coaches want to coach, players want to play, fans want to watch games. Announcers want to announce. Announcers want to announce, regardless of where we have to go to do it. And there are a couple of conferences that didn't succeed very well at that. And that should matter when it comes to making decisions of who goes forward in the college football playoff. That makes tomorrow that much more interesting as we send you back down to Don Davenport. Hey guys, you're, you're talking about this. I think it's important to point out too, Mississippi State comes in with just 55 scholarship athletes tonight. Missouri with just 54 available scholarship athletes tonight. Mississippi State has played below that 53 threshold a couple of times already this year. These kids want to play and they're willing to play with low numbers and no depth. And also I think that we should give a thank you to these student athletes for what they've had to sacrifice in order for us to have a football season as well. Time away from their families. Sometimes the program's not letting them go home at all during the holidays or on their bye week to try and keep everybody safe. So a big thank you to all these student athletes and coaches for sacrificing as well. And we've heard a lot of those stories this year, Don. Well said. Run by Lee Witherspoon into Mizzou territory. Time winding down. 
away from families, away from their friends a lot of times on campus to make sure that they're staying safe and away from COVID, the virus. And for the most part, uh, that has happened, especially in this conference, as we indicated, 97% of the total games that were set to be played back on September 26, in fact, have been culminating in the championship game tonight. Yeah, and that's that's extremely well said by Don because we have to also remember we're talking about 18 to 22 year old kids that are the center of all these things. And I, I really liked what Coach Drink talked about the, you know, supporting the mental health and well-being of our student athletes was has really, I think, been undervalued. And this pandemic and continuing to play has shined a spotlight on that that I think we need to do a better job as a people going forward because we're counting on these young people to go out and play in situations like this. Hopefully we never experience this again, but even in a good year, what these young men go through to play in games like this is, is extreme. The air raid was on the runway about four hours ago, and it has taken off in a very big way this evening. 51 on the board, a season high in terms of points for Mike Leach here in Starkville. Third win of the season. And they'll book in this campaign with impressive victories. All started down in Baton Rouge way back on September 26. Upset against the defending champs, it'll close down. It's a very impressive win against one of the more improved teams in the Southeastern Conference. And that'll do it. K.J. Costello nails it down. Mississippi State impressive this evening. Six days before Christmas. And the early presence of the fans of the Bulldogs this evening. 51-32 the final. Yeah, what does the air raid in Starkville look like when Mike Leach runs the football effectively? That could be a scary thought going forward in the SEC. And let's not overlook the first year of Coach Drink in, at Mizzou and the traction that he got really early. Congratulations to both of these teams and these programs, and we wish you well going forward. Well said, my friend. Big night for MSU. For our producer, Mike Moore, our director, Tim Sutton. Don Davenport on the sideline. Kelly Stopper here in the booth. I'm Roy Philpott. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. A big win for MSU. Final score, 51-32. Good night from Starkville, Mississippi.